Oh my god, I just realized that I had the mic muted. I was talking to myself. <laughs> oh, stupid me. I just looked at at the OBS and uh, I saw that the the microphone indicator wasn't moving and I was like, what the hell? Okay, so so yeah. Um yeah, what I said before uh was um yeah, so I uh, I updated the ES framework because I worked uh, I worked on it a bit uh, uh, during the week and um, I changed the so so we had a class for for this timer that it's a it's a helper class that I made and I've uh, incorporated it into ES framework so yeah I, I in this dummy spawner I used the one from ES framework and I deleted the one that I had in the project so. Yeah, nothing major. And it seems uh, it seems that the, that the game works uh, works okay. So so yeah, it, it, this is good. Okay, let's uh, let's commit those changes. Let me uh, stop the timer. Yeah, three minutes sounds fair. everything uh, let's do a save just to yeah so let's publish cool first update of the day so let's see what's next yeah so so there's one thing that I want to do I thought about it and I think uh, yeah I think it should be done so let me start the timer for it okay so we had where was that so we have the the tower builder that's what I that's what I meant. yeah so this is the tower builder and one thing that we we done uh, last time was um, in the actually yeah uh, in the tower module data uh, previously we had a we had we had a prefab of the of the module. Uh, it, it was a game object and it was serialized. Right now it's not, uh, and that had a problem because whenever you would load this file, this uh, scriptable object, uh, Unity would load uh, would load the the prefab as well because it was a hard reference. So what I did last time was replace it with a nested reference. This is a this is a class from uh, the addressables package made by Unity. And this basically makes a, a weak link between uh, between this file and the the prefab. Uh, basically, meaning that uh, instead of having yeah the actual reference to it, it has uh, it knows like the path to the to the prefab. So uh, it's just it's just a string. Um, and uh, because of this change, uh, this uh, asset reference requires us to to specify when we want to load the the actual object into memory so that's what we did somewhere around here I'm not sure where maybe in the spawn module yeah so we have yeah so when we spawn a module um, we look uh, we look in the module data we see if we have a prefab so 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 we we actually cache the the value of the prefab so we don't load it twice because that would be inefficient. So if we if we already loaded the data, we just use it. If we didn't load it, um, we're gonna load it and we're gonna do it in a synchronous way. And that's what we're gonna change. Uh, that's uh, that's what I wanna change. So I wanna do it uh, asynchronous because this has the the potential of uh, creating uh, like spikes in the frame rate depending on how how big the the object is and it, and also it locks the so this wait for completion it just blocks the the code execution uh, until the the data is loaded which works fine right now because we have modules that are like basically empty so it's a cylinder and some some data defined that it's not like uh, it's, it's there's nothing much but thinking uh, 
thinking for the future, th those modules might be very comp. I mean, not not very complicated, but they might have um, a lot of objects attached to it, like visual objects and. Uh, uh, no, no object pool yet. So, so I have an object pool. I, I mean, I have a class defined for it, but uh, I haven't used it yet. I don't think it's a, it's a problem for now. Um, yeah, for sure, I would use uh, object pools in the, in the future. So I was thinking of actually using object pools for for the base tower. So I mean this uh, cylinder, because this cylinder will be will be reused in every module of the tower. So I might just, uh, uh, instead of having it in uh, in each prefab and uh, spawning it every time I want a new module in the tower, I might just have, uh, I might just not have it in the in the actual prefab and just have an object pool of, uh, let's say 10, uh, 10 cores, 10, uh, 10 tower pieces and just uh, reuse them whenever I expand the tower. But uh, I'm not uh, I'm not concerned about that right now because uh, that's uh, yeah that's an optimization thing so it's gonna come later. But yeah, for sure I'm gonna use object pools, but uh, I'm not gonna bother with them for now. Yeah. So um, yeah. So that's that's what what I'd like to do. So I would I would like this to not be synchronous. I would like it to be async and that's gonna be a bit interesting because I don't know exactly how how can I do it because I haven't um, played a lot with the response of this so I know I don't know how this AC compression works so I have to look into it a bit I'm not sure if I um Actually, I think I, I know what I can do, but okay, let's let's look at this a bit. So basically, what I want to look at is let's see where we use the spawn module. Okay, so there's only one place where I use the spawn module. And now my question is, uh, so we spawn the modules. How do we, ah so so we use this? Okay, so uh, what I was wondering is. Uh, if there's anything after the spawn module that would need uh, that would need us to have the module, so yeah, we would have to split this uh, this code into two into two parts, I guess. I'm not entirely sure because I I can no longer just return the the tower module after I spawn it. That is going to be interesting. I wonder how I should do it. Hmm. I guess first of all I should just try to reproduce this function and do it. Um, let's do it like this. And let's see. Actually I think I'm going to get this this piece of code and make a separate function for it. Actually, yeah. Actually, I'm gonna just copy this. I'm just gonna change it a bit so we don't need this. Um, I don't know. Let's call it V2 or something. I don't know. I don't really care what's what's what it's called. So let's see. So I will have to to return something. I'm not sure exactly what I should return. Or actually, no, I know I know what I should return because on the else of this, on the else here, I want to return this. And let's change the yeah. It's a game object. Yeah. So so that's right. I don't really know what I should return here, so I don't know. Oh, I can make one of these. Oh, that's cool. But it doesn't have a parameter, so I assume that I can just. Uh... Okay, so let's 
cache this. Yeah, sure, call it whatever. And let's see what we what we can do with it. Or I could probably just uh instead of caching the prefab I should cache this. Or I could also uh cache this async operation handler. Mm. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Cause I think if I if if I have it, then I can just get the. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna cache it. So next, instead of caching the actual prefab, I'm gonna cache this. Uh, I'm gonna cache this. So instead of it being a prefab, let's cache this. He doesn't know what this is, so let's import whatever he wants. This is management, they seek operations. Okay, that sounds fair. So yes, oh, okay. So now I would just have to return this, I guess, but the, but the if uh, doesn't work anymore. Because it doesn't like that it's, uh, it's a null. Which is fair enough. So what's this actually? Oh, this is a struct. Interesting. Yeah, but that's not actually a problem because if it's a struct, that means that I have a value already. So instead of checking for null, I can check for this is done. And if it's... No, actually, no, it doesn't make sense. No, I think I'm going to have to make it nullable or something. Can I just do this? Okay, and now he wants me to cast it because he doesn't know what that is because I can't return a null here. Yeah, so, okay. Why is this shouting? Oh, because I changed the this prefab type. Okay, but now this is good because hmm. let's see how how I would use this. So this is not actually spawn module async. So I don't actually. Uh, it's more like uh, loading the prefab. Or I could do everything here, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, I guess I can do everything here. Or can I? Hmm. Yeah, so I'm wondering what, what return type should I have. So, whatever I do here, it's relevant. What I'm wondering is what I'm gonna do here in this uh, in this for loop. That's uh, that's the better question. I mean, if I could uh, instead of returning this ASIC operation, I think I can return. Th there was a task here, if I'm not mistaken. I have to put some brackets in this. Yeah, so there was a task. And I know I know how to work with tasks. Because I can combine them. It was something like... No. Uh, 
you don't know what the task is I guess actually let's remove this for now so it doesn't hmm. I'm pretty sure there was something for this uh, but we have the Okay, let's just try it. Um, the editor is gonna know what I wanna do. So I want the task, and I want the task here as well. So instead of AC cooperation handler, I want this to be a task. Yeah, so that's what I want threading. So now, yeah, so we have this. But it's also the, it's not what I want actually, because this is uh, I I think this is gonna be asynchronous as well. Oh, I mean synchronous, because it returns void. So I I guess this is what I want. When all, yeah, this is what I want. So basically, I'm gonna give it give it an uh, I guess an array of tasks, and it's gonna complete when all of the tasks are done. Yeah, this is what I want. Okay. Okay, okay. So actually we can we can have this everything in here so 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 we're gonna have a task actually let's copy this here yeah no what if what are, okay gonna have nothing actually I might just have to instantiate it with null but okay so we have a task we're gonna hmm. Oh uh, no, actually I have to look at if it's completed or not. Because I was thinking of, um, I think get the waiter is what I wanted. But, and this has an on complete. Yeah, but I don't think if, if, the, if the task is already completed, this is not going to fire again. So, actually I might just, let's see. Do we have documentation? Of course there's no documentation here. So let's get some... Some browser in here. Um, C sharp task. Yeah, this might do it. Yeah, so based on the wording, when it completes, that I guess so. So I guess if it's comp already completed, it's not gonna fire again, even though I just regist uh, register it again. So, so yeah, I still have to look uh, if it's completed or not. But that's not an issue. Okay, so getting back to this, let's see. Um, this is kind of annoying, but. I think I can fix it real quick. Um, value maybe. Whatever. No. Uh, let's just focus on this. Okay, so let's call this sync actually, because this is going to be synchronous. And here, instead of going to that first thing, so we're going to look at the task. Um, now that I think about it, I actually I'm stupid. I don't need the I don't need the task in here. Or do I? Yes. Hmm. 
I mean, I could create a task just for returning this. I could create a task myself. Yeah, I should be fine. Okay, so I have to look at is completed. And if it's completed, I have to, what do I have to do? Could spawn the module, I guess. I'm not sure. So I should do this with the module data. And actually, yeah, actually, I need the height because I'm going to do everything in here. So it's the module data and the height. And if it's not completed, we're going to do this. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to return the same. Yeah, yeah, that's going to work. Okay, so we're going to uncomplete, we wait for whatever to complete, and we do the same thing. We're going to spawn the module, and we're going to return the task. And this is shouting at me. Um, do I need any, anything else from the module data? No. Okay, so I'm going to... Okay, so okay. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna have to return a new a new task. Yeah, now that I think about it, because I have to return the module. Yeah. Um. Yeah, let's look at this for a bit. It's a getter. I might not just use this anytime. Uh, actually, ah, it should be fine. Okay. Okay, so we have this task. We are looking at it. We're waiting for it. Yada, yada. Let's rename this actually. Okay, so this is the prefab task. Uh, yeah, I can do it like that, but actually, it looks like shit. I mean, it could look better, but nah, let's leave it as an if else. Okay, and now we need something that I don't remember what's called. Um, it's task, uh, task completion source. I don't think that's what I want. Not sure that's what I want. But let's see. Uh, so this is going to be a tower module. Let's see. Oh, no, actually this is exactly what I want. Cause I can, yeah, yeah, this is the... I thought it's, it was called uh, something else, but uh, yeah, this is the one. So... And instead of returning this, I want this task. And this is not good because... What? Yeah, because this returns a game object, and I don't want to return a game object, I want to return a tower module, actually. No, set result. And the result is whatever this function tells us, it's the result. And I'm going to do the same in here. Okay, so we have this. Good. So, so now theoretically we have an async, async way of spawning those modules. Let's. That's not the one. Not. Yeah, this is what I wanted. And now let's uh, work on the spawn tower. 
we have to yeah we have to use the async mod uh, uh, method so i guess we have to split this four Uh, this four in two methods and into into parts because we're gonna have to wait for the for the modules. So how do we actually maybe not? Because I can hmm let's think about this. Let's make a list of tasks. List of tasks of star modules so it's not going to return a module this is the sync version so this is going to return a task and oh, let's just add it let's just add it. this oh yeah so let's instantiate this. Yep. And this, yeah, this has to be done in another, in another four, I guess. So uh, damn it. Okay, so this upper is actually the R modules dot count. This should be a var. Let's get all of this. Let's paste it in here. The module is actually actually let's let's write it here. So var module equals this of i. And he doesn't like it because what? Oh yeah, of course it's not gonna like it because it's actually a task right now. But Anyway, it's going to be something like this. So now we can just remove those here. And now we can do our our trick. So task dot um, not wait all, but when all. Okay, so when all tower modules and get the waiter on completed. Actually, um, hmm. so should I get something here? How do I get the value from this? I mean, I guess I can I can save this. I don't know. I don't know how to call it. But now this result, yeah, it's an array of tower modules. So that's exactly what I want. So now I can just copy all of this. And just, actually, let's remove this. Yeah, so put it, uh, put it in here. And it's going to be like this. I don't know why it's complaining. Let's see. I don't get it. What's the problem? Cannot by operator to operands int and method group. Oh, because it's an array. That was already so this is this has to be a length. Also I can move this from here because we don't need it here. We can move it here. And that should do it, I guess. Theoretically, this should be it. Okay, but now, okay, I can simplify this. Now let's look at the spawn tower. Where, where do I use it? So I use it. On the expand function, so where I'm where I'm using the expand function in the build function, where I'm using the build function, 
in the load phase yeah yeah so here we're saying okay build the tower and then complete the load procedure but actually I don't want this to be synchronous I have I need to have this be asynchronous so we're gonna have to carry some tasks around so instead of this being a void it's gonna be a task so expand that's gonna re it's gonna return a task so the spawn tower is gonna return a task let's go there uh, blah, 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 blah. task so I'm not sure if I can return God damn it. I'm not sure I can return this. Oh, it lets me. Yeah, I was thinking that maybe it was gonna let me because this is uh, not a simple task, but it's the generic version. But he knows how to cast it, so that's cool. Because I don't need the value outside of a spawn tower. So now what I can do, if we go here, instead of having this, we can get an awaiter, we can get uncompleted and do this after the tower is built and actually that's a method yeah, actually that's uncomplete, complete load yeah, this, this looks good and actually I can simplify this even more with an expression yeah this looks nice now I wonder if it's gonna work <laughs> Okay, is there anything I have to do? No, no. So everything should be set up. So I should just be able to press play and it should work. If it doesn't crash. And it crashed. Attempting to load asset reference that's already been loaded. Okay, so... Oh yeah, that makes sense. Because I... I'm using, I'm looking at the prefab, but I never uh, save this back in here. And now it's not gonna like that, so let's do this. Actually, it might not like that either, so I want that. That wasn't good. Let's do this, yeah. So he doesn't know what ta what the task is, and that's understandable. I will have to save this in another variable. I just make this, uh, yeah, something like this. Oh god damn it! Nope, that's not what I want. Okay, like this. Yeah, now it should be fine. Because now I save the async operation back into the prefab, so the next time it tries to get it, it's going to enter in the if instead of the else. Ah, let's see. Oh my god, it actually works. And it actually started. Holy shit. <laughs> I was not expecting this. Okay. Let's try it again. Let's make a, uh, a bigger tower, actually. Uh, how do I make a bigger tower? Actually, I don't know. I think I have to go to the tower builder. Can I set something here? No, I can't. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. It's hard coded in the. It's hard coded in here, I think. Yeah, so, so there's a in here let's make a let's make it 30 modules this might be but I just want to see if, if it if it's taking a long time what's gonna happen it should work fine Wow, that was actually rather quick but there are, are there 30 modules in here doesn't look like 30 modules There might be 30 modules in here.
Okay, something weird is happening. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so they're not in the same order. Which is not good. I mean, actually, it doesn't matter in what order we have them in the in the hierarchy. I don't care about that, actually. I think. What I care about is that they're in the same order when we receive the... Yeah, but that, that should be guaranteed by when all. Yeah, so let's, let's look at this. Because if this is not in the same order, that's gonna be... That's not gonna be good. But based on based on the fact that I see the the enemies following the path correctly, I think that's gonna give me the same order. But now, no, no, that, that's interesting because now that I see that they're in uh, different orders in here, that means that uh, the async, uh, async operation works. So that's nice. Okay, let's uh, let's look at this. Yeah, when it, yeah, but I wanna I wanna look at the return. I thought that it was a completion that all of supply that, but. Uh, We set to an array containing all the results of the supply task in the same order they were provided. Yeah. Oh, contain. Yeah. Okay. So that's 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 good. It would have been weird if the the order was uh, was not the same. But yeah. Okay. So we've done this. And we actually did it. Hmm. I, esti I estimated the time correctly. So. It took us 35 minutes instead of 30 that I estimated, but it's close enough. Okay. That in it, what the f hmm. I think the music just stopped, and I don't like that. Uh, let's see what happened here. Let's let's review the code a bit. Okay, so yeah, so I saved this async operation. Hmm, I, I wonder if I should save the, the task instead of the ASIC operation. Because I'm, I'm not using this ASIC operation for anything. Hmm. But I do need the task every time. I may just save the task. Yeah, let's do that. Just get rid of this. Now it's gonna shout at me that it doesn't know what what this is. Actually, no, yeah, yeah, that's correct. Because I don't have to do this anymore. No more. Actually, no. I have to cast it, but I don't need the. So this has to be a task. Oh, it knows. Wait. Oh, I think I know why. I think this is better. I think. Actually, I needed that. I think the task is a class. Yeah, yeah. So it can be, it can be null. But I no longer need that. Yeah. So now I can do a task in here, and actually I can get rid of that async operation. Just do it like this, and all of this can be here. Yeah, that looks a bit better. I like it. Nice. Actually, now that, now that I think about it, I I don't need this. So I can make it a null in here. And remove that, and I can just use this everywhere. So I don't need that variable, and he's gonna tell me that I can use yeah the special operator. Yeah, yeah, this looks way way better. So if I if this is null, it's gonna assign it to this, and then I'm gonna use it from there. 
Okay, let's see if it still works. Um, yeah, so it got the threading, whatever. That's a task now. Let's see if it still works. And let's get some more music in here. Hmm, what should we listen to? Um, yeah, let's do this. Or actually not. Let's, um, what was that? Yeah, no. Hmm. Let's just scroll for a bit and see what we find. Oh, oh, let's do tries. Yeah, haven't listened to them in a, in a while. Wait, where is the? Wait, there's an album missing from here. What's happening? Why don't I have this album in my lab? It says it's in the library, but it's not in the library. That's amazing. What the hell? Okay, so just because it tells me that it's not in there, I'm just gonna listen listen to it. Let's remove it and edit again. Yeah, now it's in here. Okay, so actually let's start again. So I, so you have the whole library. Cool. Okay, getting back to this. I don't know if I played it again or not. So let's try it again. I think I actually pressed it. Oh, and I have a piece of code that I have to remove. Okay. Okay, so there are 20 modules here, but I'm quite sure I said that I want 30 modules. So where are the rest of the modules? I said 30, right? Yeah, so I said 30 in here. So where are the rest of the modules? Oh, huh. interesting. Oh, could it be that I have a, a game save? That could be it. Can I? I can't clear. How can I clear the... How do I clear? I don't have a clear button. God damn it. I know how to clear. Let's clear our player prefs. Let's try it again. Yeah, I think I, I had a game save. Yeah. yeah. That's better. That looks like 30 modules to me now. Yep, there are 30 modules in there. Yeah, that's that's better. Yeah, so it was uh, the tower was saved, so it loaded that from from the disk. But actually, let's get it back to to 10 modules, and let's remove this piece of code because that's no longer needed. Yay! Okay. Cool. Let's actually review this file. So we know the diff. Okay, so this one. Come on. Open the damn program. Yeah. Oh, I don't like this. I have to remove that. I don't like that. Yay, so we added tasks everywhere. Oh yeah, there's one thing that I have to do. Yeah. There's one thing that I have to do. Otherwise that's gonna annoy me and probably be harmful in the end. Okay, so actually first thing. So I don't want this. I don't know why that is happening. I I don't need those two. I don't need this. Why is this thing? Okay, so I removed everything and now it works. I mean, it still works, which is weird. Okay, so getting back to this. Um, first of all, let's... Wait, I saw... Uh, where was that? Oh, here. So let's do something about this variable because yeah, it looks ugly. Okay. 
Um, I don't know. It's better than the the one before. Okay, so let's save this. And what was the other thing that I wanted to do? Now I forgot. Let's see the diff again. So there is something that I wanted to do. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I have to put a try catch in here. So I think I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it in here. So so one problem with uh, using uh, tasks. Actually, is it with tasks or is it with async await? That's a good question. So a problem that we had in uh, in our previous game, the Equinox Hunt, was that uh, I was using um, async await for, uh, together with tasks so that I can write uh, instead like. Uh, let me show you. So instead of doing this, like get awaiter on complete blah blah blah, I can just do so. I, I, I would declare this as an async function, and then I can just this is a wait of this, and now this t variable is should be a game object. Yeah, so it's a game object. One problem that this has is that if there's an error in here, so so actually if you if you return the task it's fine. If you don't return anything, um, this uh, this notation will throw errors, but no one will catch them. So so basically that would translate for us in this function, where we we have a task. We don't return anything, and if we if we have used uh, async await in here, any any errors that would reach this point would not be um, would not have been thrown, so you would not get them in uh, get them in the console. And I had caught a lot of problems with that in uh, in our previous game because I was seeing the game breaking. I mean, I was playing it and it would break, but uh, there was no error. In the code, so yeah, it was quite painful to to watch it. I mean, to to debug it. But I think I can um, let's undo what I did previously. So let's. Uh, I think I can test this. So I, I don't know if it's a. I don't remember if it's a problem with uh, the task itself because I I don't return it or because of the await async. So one thing that I can that I can do is here. I can just throw an error. Uh, throw a new system exception. Dummy. And now there are two things that can happen. Uh, the tower is not going to be built, that's for sure. But I can either see the error in the console or not. And if I see it, that's amazing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I get it. Ah, yeah, yeah, I know. I I remember what the problem the the problem was. Yeah, so so there's um let's do it like this. So uh, not static. Uh, so let's do it a sync. Let's just call it uh, whatever. And um. So, if you do, yeah, yeah, I remember exactly the problem. So, so, so in um, in C sharp, you can have async functions. So you can mark a, a method with async, and you can use the notation of await uh, with any tasks, and you get the uh, you get the you get the value back. So, so this is still a uh, a synchronous function. Um, but you, it's it's more like a sugar coating thing. You don't have to write that uh, that whole thing that I did in here with, uh, yeah, get a waiter and then on complete, or on completed, and just write uh, a wait and the task you have, and it's just gonna do it for you. And there are two things you can do. So so you can either do it like this and return void, which basically says, okay, 
whoever is going to call this function, uh, this function is going to do. Um, okay, yeah, actually, let's make the example more uh, more complete. Uh, let's make another function, and here I can call this method. Let's put a log here. Come on, let me import this. God damn it, what the heck? Let me import this. Okay, this is stupid. Okay, cool. Yeah, so. If you if you have this method and it's an async method but you don't return anything, what's gonna happen? So you you would think that okay, so you're gonna call this method and it's gonna wait for this test to complete, then write inside and then it's gonna continue in this other method and it's gonna uh, log uh, the after message. But that does not does not gonna, what's gonna happen. So because you you don't return anything in this method, this is gonna be just like uh, separate from the execution so so you call the method this method is not going to return anything so so the method is going to stop basically at the await and it's going to wait the task to complete but uh, when it uh, yeah when it does that uh, the execution of the other method is just going to continue so so it's just going to exit this function it's going to log the after and whenever this task is complete in the in the method, it's gonna continue the execution in here. So basically, you're gonna see the the the, the log messages reversed. And this is the this is where the where we had the the issues because I was uh, um, I was using a sync with void because I wanted to have async operations, but I didn't care uh, to wait for them. I just wanted to to start them, and uh, they would be they would end whenever they wanted. I, I didn't care about uh, when they did. But one caveat of this is that if you throw an error in here, uh, you're not gonna, you're never gonna catch it. You'll, you'll have to, to, to put a try catch in here and do, do your logging yourself. Because the, there's, there's no one that's gonna, that's gonna carry, or there's nothing that's gonna carry your error from this method to the outside world, let's say. So basically, in here. So so your your error is not gonna, or your exception is not gonna exit from here and reach the the main program. So yeah, that that was the problem that we had. But if you if you just uh, if you just return tasks, it should be fine. And as you as you as we can see, it's uh, it did the the trick. So this is a void method, but it's not uh, it's not an async uh, async await thing. And actually, I can I can no, I can't validate because I'm not supporting. Actually, no, no, I I, I can validate it. So I can make this a sync. I can await this. And after awaiting the build thing, I can complete the load. And let's make sure that we still have that. No, I no longer have it. So let's throw this again. New exception. Let's call it dummy2 or dumb2. Sure. And now the, do the tower shouldn't be built because we have an exception, but the. The error shouldn't be shown in the console. Huh. You do get the error. That's interesting. I was not expecting this. I for sure thought that we're not gonna see this. I mean... To be fair, I should be te testing this in um, in the previous LTS version of the of Unity, because that's what we used for. Yeah, that's what we used for um, for the Akinx sound. 
but for sure this this uh, didn't work in the in the previous version because that this is exactly what I what I had to deal with having uh, I mean not not me throwing exceptions but code just breaking somewhere and I I would never get the message in the in the console because I would have uh, something like this but I would have an async function but I wasn't returning anything so if Unity knows how to do this or just it, it just updated the the C sharp version yeah so this if this works that's actually nice but I'm still not gonna use it so I right now I'm quite I could say that I'm afraid of using it because I know how much of a headache I had because I used it and um, previously so in the Equinox Hunt those uh, uh, yeah the, the ES, uh, ES framework that I made was using uh, tasks for, for the load uh, for this load phase it would return a task and uh, because of uh, what happened I, I changed it for the for this new game so that's why we have to 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 call this complete load so that uh, the system knows when the when whatever you did inside uh, is finished but yeah i might have to revisit this sometime if 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 we uh, if we actually get errors now from this so let's let's try it again let's uh, see if we if we're good yeah so we have a tower that's amazing let's um add some more minutes to this task because yeah let's actually let's look at the music let's see how many songs we've listened to and yeah rough calculation so i i would say about 15 minutes I, okay so log work 15 minutes yeah Okay, let's. So now that I that I look at this task, and uh, that I see that I I have um, exceeded the the expected time that I that I put up that I set up, I wonder if I will have time to to make all the other tasks that I planned for for today. Because I have quite a long list. Let me. See if I can show you. Yeah, so I have. So we've done those two. And now we're going to continue with this. And I have quite a lot of components and managers that I want to I wanna start working on. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do all those. But we'll see. I mean... I mean, some of these tasks are quite small. I mean, I think they're small, but I, yeah, we'll see when when we start working on it, them. Okay, let's get the. Uh, actually, no. Let's let's start with this. Okay, so let's track time for this. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is. Yeah, so let's look at the module. Yeah, so we have let's let's take this module for example. So we're gonna have modules for the game, and we're gonna have different visual elements uh, stuck onto the tower. And what I want to do is have uh, have a, a helper function that is gonna do the same thing as um, what this path uh, or the waypoints for the path does. So instead of having a position for each waypoint, the pa uh, the paths are uh, uh, or the waypoints are made out of uh, an angle, uh, which is the angle around the around the tower and the height, so the the y component. So you can just uh, set an angle, and the the as you can see, the line is just gonna curve around the around the tower. And I, I want to use the same mechanism to to place items on the tower. So you can just uh, change the angle and the height. And it's just going to basically rotate around the tower. And it's always going to uh, face away from the tower. 
So that's gonna, I think that's gonna make uh, things much easier to to work with. Instead of having to manual manually place them and uh, yeah, yeah, that should do it. Okay, so uh, let's start working on this. So, so what I called this method was tower aligned component. So let's let's make this. Now, uh, actually, a good question is where should I put it? It's part of the tower, man. Should be in the tower. Should be in the module, but it doesn't. I mean, it's used in the module, but it's not part of the. Yeah, I might just put it in here. Public class is gonna be a mono behavior, and I'm gonna do a couple of things. Yeah, so let's think about this for a bit. Um, How do I want to do this? Hmm. So what I know for sure is that um, I want to have um, so we're gonna have an int for the angle, not like this. We're gonna have a float. Or the height, and actually, let's look at the uh, where would that be? So, in splines, uh, in the spline, yeah, let's look at this. So, I know I will want this, uh, okay, so let's get this, actually, let's move this here. So, I know I'll need the global tower data, and that's gonna be, yeah. That's something that I need, and let's uh, let's put those uh, attributes on this to make it look the same as the as the spline. We're gonna have an angle which is gonna be zero. We're gonna have a height which also is gonna be zero. And I wonder if I should do a gizmo. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, let's draw a Gizmos, but uh, um, only when it's select. I said when it's selected. So what I'm gonna do is have two. Um, no, actually, I only need one. Yeah, so tower utils dot waypoint to position. The root position transform dot no the root position of the module or spline oh yeah that's yeah, that's correct so I will need a reference to like the root hmm. yeah that does make sense Module root, let's make this serialize. Another serialized field. Also, this has to be a serialized field as well as this one. This has to be a serialized field, and it's gonna be private, and this is gonna be named like this. And no, yeah, this is a private, so let's make it look like a private. It's not going to be transform, but module, no, nope. module root dot position. Okay, what's the next thing that we need? The path radius. 
So we get that from here, which is path radius. Actually, we don't need path radius, and I'm gonna change that. I mean, I mean, we need a radius, but not the path radius. But we're gonna keep it for now. So we need the angle, and we need the the height. So we have the position, and let's draw a line from position position plus position that norm no cut it normalized uh, uh, times 0.25 f color um, let's make it cyan should let's make it something oh cut it Actually, fuck it. Let's let's leave it sand. Okay, let's make a let's go to a module and add this uh, component. And also, let's get the chat back in here. Okay, so let's get to the straight module and let's put okay. Uh, visual component component visula visual component. Power aligned component, and this is throwing a shit ton of errors. Okay. Um. Oh, I think I see it. Yay! There is our line, which is so small. Hmm. I may just make it from the the center. Okay, so let's do. Uh, actually, I can't do it from the center, so let's... Uh, actually, no, I can. So I can do vector tree dot op. Uh, yeah. Times the height. And I have to also add the... Module root position. Okay, so we should have a yeah a straight line from the center, and we can change the height. That looks correct. We can never exceed the maximum, so so that's okay. We can spin this around the around the tower. Let's get some. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, so that works. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So instead of 25, let's put it 0.5 in. Or actually, let's make it one, just one meter. Let's leave it like this. And let's change this from sand to something else. Um, let's make it white. Sure, why not? Just so, just so that it's uh, is different from the path. Okay. So now, whenever it's not selected, it's not shown. Oh, but if we select the the module, it's gonna be shown. Yeah, I'd like to make it so only when we select when you select it. Or yeah. Mm. Yeah, this might be okay for for right now. Uh, let's make it uh, so it doesn't throw errors if it doesn't have uh, those uh, values set. So if this is null or uh, what else? The module root is null. Just return. No, I don't want to. Actually, it does make sense because it's a property. This is not a field. Fine. I'm gonna name it like that. Okay. Oh, actually, it's a scriptable object, right? 
Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Let's make this look a little bit better. So, hide monoscript and let's put some spaces in here. So, let's put like 20 pixels between those two. And I might just put them on the same line, actually. Yeah. Actually, let's make. Um, Right, but actually, I can make them uh, const. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, let's put it here. So this is line two. Oh, God damn it, this looks like shit. Because I have to, actually, I might just, yeah, let's get this to, and I have to put the space in here. So they are aligned. Which is kind of stupid, but whatever. I think that's not. Yeah, actually, I don't, I don't like them on the same line. So we're just gonna undo this. Yeah, it looks better. What I might do though is put them on different tabs. So, um, tabs dot base group tabs dot um, general now so let's put this in general and let's put this in internal and also let's make those um, required so it shows some errors in here You can see them twice, which is not great, but I think that's because we've added those horizontal groups. So I guess we have to get rid of them. Which also doesn't make me like it, so so I, I liked it when it was on, uh, on a single line. And also I like it that it's much more cleaner now that we don't have those. Uh, sticking out every time. What happens if I said none here? So if I go here, mm, it would be cool if I would have like this tab uh, with red or something. If there was an error inside of it, I guess I guess that's a bit much. Or maybe is it something like we can do? So there are. Now I guess it's not something that we can do. I don't see anything interesting in the... in the list of um, parameters. Yeah, so I'm gonna get... Actually, let's undo, because I want the horizontal groups back. What I might do, though, I might just... Um, no, 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 let's leave it like this. Yeah, that should do it. This should do it. Let's just keep it like this. So we have the angle and the height. We can we can change those. 
Where is my line? I don't see my line. Oh, so I have to set this. Oh, and I want that required. Um, let's add it actually. And not in here, but in here and here. Okay. Module root is required. Yes. Now we have the line. Okay. Okay, so this should do it. So now, so now basically what we can do, so Let's make something in here. Let's, uh, I don't know. Let's put a, let's put a plane. Yeah, sure. But let's make it way, way, way smaller. Like 0 0.25. Oh yeah, actually we haven't finished this. So we, we, we've drawn the gizmos, but um, we don't have the the actual functionality of the tower line component because what it has to do now will have uh, will need a um, let's see um, yeah so let's do it like this so it's gonna be on on change method and what we're gonna do is transform that position but actually no, let's do our position. The position is gonna be this. Let's get this. That's gonna be our position. And the and we're also gonna need a rotation and I don't know what the rotation is gonna be. So there's a look rotation. Yeah, yeah, actually that's that's what I need. So position and vector three dot up. So now we can do um yeah. Set uh, position and rotation, it's pause and rot. And this on change meta is gonna be called in here on value change name of this. So whenever the height or the angle is changed, we're gonna call this function. Okay. There we go. And that's not actually and that's not actually right. I mean it doesn't it doesn't look right. Uh, let's look at the at the side. So I don't know why this is tilted. Or more like why this is tilted. Could this be normalized? Actually, this should be normalized and... Oh, I don't have my... My cool method in here. Mm, God damn it. Let's try it like this. Okay. 
but it's still this is still uh, it's still not right. Oh, wait a second. Wait, what? Why is it tilted? Why the hell is it tilted? What? Why? Oh, because of the position? I guess it's because of the position, so... Yeah, so I want the position... Plus normalize, but this, yeah, this should be, I should do the same thing as there. So I wanted basically the direction, but I don't want it. I don't want the, the Y component, so let's do it like this. Yeah, because that's basically like one meter, I guess. Yeah. That's it. So now, I can just change this. And this is gonna always be pointed outwards. And now I can come and say, okay, so on Y, I wanna rotate this by 90. Let's make a, a, a cute material for this. Um, so, something. And let's make this blue. Um. Anyway, yeah, so, so now we can just put this object wherever on the tower and it's always going to be aligned which is nice yeah yeah this is cool and this is like the height you can never get Cool. This is actually cool. Uh, I might just remove the the gizmos. I don't think it's actually needed. Or actually, fuck it. Let's leave it there. I might just have to put a toggle for it. Maybe. Yeah, but now now that, that there's something that's bothering me. So let's get rid of the spline. So as you can see, it's the the object is quite far away from the from the tower. And that's because I use the what I call the path radius, which is basically the the radius of the tower and the offset of the path from the tower. But this is not actually what I want. So instead of using the path radius, I want to use the radius of the of the tower. And I what I might actually want. No, this is good. No, this it's it's okay to be like this. Okay, so now, yeah, now it's sticking uh, to the tower. Yeah, and if you, so I was thinking of adding um uh, an offset in here, an offset field, so you could. Uh, uh, get it away from the tower, but um, yeah, you can just come in here and change the contents of the the object and make it 
uh, go further from the from the tower. So that's actually not needed. Okay, so we have this. This is actually quite nice. Now we can have multiple of those and just put them wherever. Yes. I may just make this uh, this line stick out more, actually. It's gonna be quite a bit, but I, I, I think it's gonna be good. Actually, that's 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 good. Yeah. Why does it look like this one? It's sticking further than this one. Hmm. Yeah, that's definitely sticking further than this one. What the hell? That's so weird. Which one is this one? This one. What? Okay, now that's interesting. So if I'm lower in the module, the line is bigger. If I'm way up here, it's smaller. Okay, so there's there are more problems than I originally anticipated. So yeah, it does make sense. So actually, I don't I don't want to use the root position. I think I'm, I want to use actually this as the root position, or more like add the height to the root position and make the height zero. Yeah, let's try that. And this is the root position. It still has the same issue. Huh. Why is that? So it's somehow because of the direction, but I don't, don't see why. Because it's the normalized position or... Actually, it's not actually correct. So this position is going to be in world space, so I, I will have to subtract the, the root position to get it into local space. And then... This doesn't make any sense. Let's uh, actually no. Let's uh, how do I do that? Yeah, let's put some console logs in here. Um, log. Okay, so the position is this. The direction is this. Let's see what it does. Ah, uh, it does make sense. Yeah, okay, so I know what to do. Um, 
so I'll have to do this normalization after I set the direction after I set the y component to zero because if this is not zero it's gonna change the length of the vector so when we normalize it uh, it's gonna have an impact on yeah yeah that's that's it so wherever I am on the tower the the direction stays the same yep yeah that was the problem cool let's get rid of this What's this? Okay, so I think we're done with this. Let's see if we can if we can get a, a module piece. Yeah, there we go. Oh shit. Let's focus on something. There we go. We have a, a tower module with some uh, wannabe windows. Nice. Cool. So I guess this task is done as well. And yeah, we've gone way above the estimation by like 20 minutes, but that's not a problem. This is, is actually okay. Okay, let's look. Let's just read the, the component a bit to see if we. We have degrees. This is in meters. We have this on change class. I wonder if we can make the draw gizmos uh, function uh, smaller because now we have the on change uh, or we, or we have the the transform position of this uh, of this game object is set so we actually I don't think we need to calculate this again Yeah, I, I think we can get get rid of this. So instead of this, we might just have the transform that position. And that should do the same thing. So this is the root position. This is the position. Yeah, this should be the same thing. Let's look at the straight piece. Let's try with this one. Sure. Yep. Yep, it's the same thing. Oh, one thing that I wanted to do actually was lock the transform so that it doesn't um, so, you, so you can't change it because that would just break everything and I know exactly what I can look for that so we have a component in ES framework called folder okay so this has executed in edit mode and it does this it sets on the on the yeah so I would have to set the uh, yeah, okay. This does make sense. Okay, okay. Can do that. Let's put this here. Actually, let's start the timer again. Because I guess we're going to work on this for a little bit more. Um, so, 
execute in edit mode. A week. Let's do this. Uh, no. Yeah. So transform the tag flags is I set it on not editable. Let's make this like this. Awake on destroy. God damn it. I don't want any flags on this. Okay, so let's see how this does. We'll have to make another. Um... Oh no, it did it. It did it by itself. Nice, so now. Cool. So now we can no longer edit the transform, which is nice. I might just want to set the scale to 1. Or, yeah. So actually, let's. Uh... Do it like this so can I set scale? No, it's just scale or local scale. So I want vector 3.1. Yeah sure make it a variable. So reset the scale and the position and rotation. Yeah that's just gonna be okay. Um we can call on change in here, I guess. So whenever we add it, we just uh, yeah. Let's make a, a new game object in here. Visual object, whatever. Okay, so let's change this. Let's change this. Let's do some weird stuff with this. Let's put it wherever. Where is it? It's there. Okay, so now if we add this. It won't do anything because we don't have those. Which is not a biggie because now I can add this and then add this. And now that I think about it, I think I'm gonna put this on change value on on here too. So whenever those values are changed, the the, the on change is called. So Yeah, so let's remove this. Let's see if it's okay. So it uh, it changed this. Okay, so now let's add it again. It's not gonna do anything. Let's set this and let's set it lower now. Yeah, so it just stick uh, stick it to the tower. But what's with this? What's with this error? So that, this is an error I don't like. So on line 42, it just threw an error on change. Oh yeah, it does make sense. So let's uh, have the same if in here. And actually, this doesn't make any sense because if we don't have those two set and we won't have them when the the component is created, it's not gonna work anyway. Okay, so let's try it again. Um, remove component, do something weird to it. The scale has been reset. Position and value, they were, they haven't been set yet. But if we set everything, yeah, now it sticks to the tower. Cool, 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 cool. Let's actually remove this one. Let's save this. Okay. Yeah, that should do it. Feature. Publish. Okay, 
let's see let's see what's next I think I'm gonna do this and now that I think about it this might not be actually 10 minutes but yeah so right now um, in the spline we actually let me show you so whenever we want to evaluate the spline um, where's the evaluate function yeah here so whenever we want to evaluate the spline we calculate the what do you call it yeah we calculate the spline so so basically the splines as i said previously it's defined by waypoints and each point a waypoint has a an angle and a height and whenever you evaluate the spline so you get a percent so at what percentage do you on the 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 position you yeah you have to to calculate you have to take um yeah, I have to take uh, those uh, those points into consideration, but uh, you have to look at at uh, however they are curved around the towers, you know, because because you have the points, but it's not just a straight line between them. It's the line will curve around the tower. So basically, I calculate this curvature, let's say. But that that's good, but it might become an expensive uh, operation down the line because what we'll have to do. Uh, so what what we will need is um, for the towers uh, or not the towers, but the the weapons to to track enemies, or more like uh, whenever they are not tracking the enemies, to they should be pointing towards the path or some some. Uh, also, some uh, some weapons they do require to point towards the path because they're not tracking the enemies, but they're pointing the track and uh, the or the path, and uh, um, they do stuff whenever something's in front of them or things like that. So, yeah, it might be it might become an expensive uh, an expensive operation to to do all of this. Uh, maybe a couple of times uh, per frame or or at least one time per frame for each weapon because right now yeah if you look at this of this uh, um, of this plan yeah this is simple because it has two points but if we'll have uh, 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 splines that have like 100 points yeah this is not gonna become a, not gonna be a a simple operation anymore so what I what I would like to do is to cache so so whenever uh, the waypoints are are changed I would like to cache this uh, uh, I would like to cache this uh, this list of points but actually I don't know if I want to cache them hmm I don't know if I should cache them uh in the editor and have them saved in the component or calculate them at runtime so whenever the game starts calculate them there yeah actually that might be a bit a bit uh, too expensive to calculate them at runtime so yeah i might just have to to save them in a list in the in this spline and use it from there. Hmm. But now that I think about it, 
am I running into another problem? So, so okay, let's say we let's say I cache the the values, and um, yeah, so I have the values cached. I, I don't have to do all those calculations, but I still have to do some calculations be, because I so so in the evaluate function, I have a percentage, and based on this percentage, I would have to know. Actually no, that I don't I don't I don't care, cause cause the values in the cache are are gonna be so so oh yeah 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 that's gonna work. So if I space uh, the values in the cache, uh, so I have a an equal distance between each point, then the percentage would be I would have to just to calculate the index in the in that cache in the array or list whatever I choose to put there. I would just have to do a division, I guess, or, or actually a multiplication, and just get the index, and just get the value from that index. But that will only work if, if I have uh, uh, equal distances between uh, between the values, and I wonder if I can do that. Yeah, I might not be able to do that actually. But at least not for all points. Whenever I would reach a let's let's get a let's get painting here. Okay, so let's say this is our man I, I draw like shit. Let's say this is our line. And let's say this is, yeah, I think this is going to work. So this is the length we're going to use. So we have a, this is waypoint one, this is waypoint two, and we want to generate points uh, between those two, those two values. So we'll put one there, we'll put one there. Damn it. We'll get another one there, and when we reach the fourth point, yeah, it's gonna overshoot. It can over, yeah, yeah, it can, it can fall right on on the on the second waypoint, where it can overshoot. And now the problem is, if it overshoots, I'll have to I'll have to correct this by making this shorter. So I would say actually the point is not there, the point is actually here. So this is where it ends and it's just going to continue from there. And because of this, I mean, we're talking about actually, yeah. If you talk about, so if, if those distances were like large numbers, or like vast distance, like let's say one meter or something. That might be noticeable, but if we have like small distances, like centimeters or something between each uh, each of those intermediary waypoints, it might not be no noticeable. So the so the method might work, even though it's not gonna be perfectly accurate. So I might just do it like this. And I can test it because I can I can keep this uh, this evaluation function and just write the the other one next to it and um, evaluate them both and see what the difference is. So we can we can see the the difference between the the values that we get. So we shouldn't have a yeah I think that's what that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, so even though those are not, I mean, not all of them are equal distances, it's gonna be it's gonna be okay because the the distances are uh, are so small. So 
Yeah. Okay, okay, let's try this. Well, actually, let me check this code for a sec. Oh, that's right. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So let's let's try to make this uh, caching method, I guess. Actually, let's see. Let's see what what we should uh, actually cache. Um. Yeah, I think it's going to be an array of uh, vector trees. Actually, it's going to be serious. Actually, I'm not even going to Oh no, no. Let's 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 make it three only for now. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hide it from the editor uh, at the end because we don't actually need to see this in the editor. We don't care about it. What is this? This. What's this? Set up waypoints. Ah, so uh, yeah, yeah, it's the one with. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it calculates the length at the end. Okay. Yeah, so I guess this is where we want to do stuff. Hmm, I wonder how we should do it. Actually, let's look at the the gizmos function because that's what uh, this does a great job of it. Let's close everything that we don't need. Actually, we might just split this into two. Yeah. So let's have the gizmos function in here and um, um. So let's see what, what this is doing. So it gets the root position. It loops through all the waypoints and it gets them two by two. And then it has a step, uh, a step distance that it uses. And it, and it uses it to okay, so it uses it to lerp between those uh, between the angle and the height. So basically, it, actually, it's a, it's it's more like a percent, which is not quite quite what I want. Actually, it's not at all what I want. Yeah. So I I want to to calculate this percentage based on something else, not uh, 
because as I said, I want uh, equal distances between those uh, points in the cache. But the but the start is good. So 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 yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. So I want to yeah, let's get this. So I'm gonna loop through all the all the waypoints. Yeah, and that's actually yeah. I, I have to go through. Yeah, yeah. That's this is what, uh, what I'm gonna do. This is gonna be a big list. This is gonna be a big list. Oh, so no, not lengths, but uh, segments length of um, I. Yeah, so I get the length, and now what I want is another four. Yeah, let's actually let's get this. Um, let's get this four because it's actually it's actually good. So it starts from zero, it goes up to the length, and let's get this var step equals. Yeah, sure. Let's put it zero zero point one. But the difference is um, one to percentage, which the percentage is, is the length divided by k. And instead of using k, I'm going to use the percentage here. Uh, next j is percentage plus step, and it's going to be a clamp from zero to length yeah and I'm gonna oh yeah so this is gonna be clamped actually oh actually this doesn't make any sense No, so this is gonna be. Wait. This should be k over length, because this is the maximum. So that's gonna be given the percentage. And here I want the next one. So it's gonna be k plus the step. Everything divided by length. And actually, yeah, it was a clamp zero one. And I'm gonna do the same here too. Yeah. But now the thing is, uh, if this percentage is one, actually I don't want to do anything. Hmm. Actually, now that I think about it, actually I don't need this uh, this next uh, this next value. Cause I just yeah 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 that's it. So I'm gonna do this. Let's make a let's run this. Let's make cash equals new. I'm not cash uh, it's a list of vector three it wants to be a const sure let it be a const and you're not being used anywhere that's not a problem because so we take the cache we do a two array and that's it and also yeah here so so I want to do so I want the the minimum between the 
k plus k plus the step and the length so that so that I don't uh, overshoot and I get the the last point as well <laughs> actually what actually it might be okay to overshoot nah nah I should be okay yeah Maybe okay to overshoot if we're not the last waypoint, actually. Hmm. hmm. So my thinking is that if we so this is a spline made of two of three waypoints and let's say we're calculating the first uh, where we're between the two the, the the first two waypoints if we overshoot no actually no no it's 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 good that we yeah no no we have to cap it because we have to stop here and then we when we start again for the next uh, for the next two we start from here and calculate it yeah no actually yeah yeah the the clamp here it's uh, it's good and it should be done all the time okay okay so now we can make another uh, evaluate function that uh, uses the cache instead of the instead of calculating the the length. <gasps> oh. Oh no, it's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's this is good. Why was I using this? Actually, actually. Oh, for the lengths. Yeah, it does make sense. Okay, and let's just move this um, a bit higher so it's next to the, yeah. Okay, so let's make another evaluate function. Let's call it V2. Oh, and it's gonna be so easy. Okay, so let's um, let's think about this. Um, hmm. Yeah. So let's do var index equals. So we get the cache, uh, the length of the cache, we multiply it by the percent. And this will get us a float, which is not what we want, but we can floor to int this and just get the index. And now we can just return the cache cache of index uh, actually oh this is oh so this returns us returns the the angle and the height oh interesting so what are we using this in two way in two places no okay am I just uh, no I'm, I, I am gonna change this and just return a vector 3 I could change the whole thing in the in, in the cache instead of having uh, vector trees I could have uh, the angle and the height or I could have them both so that's that can easily change but uh, right now we're just gonna use uh, or uh, we're gonna, just gonna return vector tree so let's uh, change this evaluate function or yeah so we're gonna change this Um, 
so that's the real position, like that's the, the actual position. Um, then I'll evaluate two, and we only need the percent. And now what I want to do here is uh, log them both. Or actually, should I log them or should I uh, log the difference? I might just log the difference. Or like, uh, so, so get the percent and then, um, so let's put like fixed three and then, uh, Uh, yeah, let's call it diff, and it's gonna be um, real position minus the cash position, and I want the magnitude. And this is gonna be a let's actually let's a little bit like this, so we can get as, as many as many decimals as we need. Okay, so we have this. Let's see how it looks in Unity. And now that I think about it, I might just have to get into each module and create the the bridge. Whoa, this is taking a while. Not good. This is actually not good. We might have to look a bit at this uh, recalculate cash. So no, uh, this calculate length. When is it? So so it's done here, and then it's done in. Haha! <laughs> oh. Okay. This is not good. But what am I doing that it's so... I mean, I do create this cache and I just add like a bunch of values to it. Yeah, I wasn't thinking that's gonna be a problem. I might have to add a debounce to this somehow. So if we change the value, it's gonna just recalculate it once every like five seconds or like five seconds after it's done. Okay. But um, yeah, I haven't thought that's gonna be it's gonna be an such an expensive. Uh, Operation. So what's the length in here? So we have 31 meters. It's gonna enter once in this four, and then this four is gonna be like uh, so 300 steps, something like that. I, I, I bet it's because of this cache. Quite sure it's because of the cache. I mean, not because of this cache, but because we add uh, values to it. And it has to recycle it, uh, a bunch of times. Because otherwise, it should be um, a simple operation. Because it doesn't do like, it doesn't do much. It's a clamp, it's a lerp, which is like, uh, super easy to do. This is also not that complicated. It's a 
then a scene. Okay, I'm making a vector three here, but not um it's not that bad. I mean we can get away with not creating a new vector tree in here by using the root position and adding it in here for each component instead of doing this addition. And I might just do that because that's uh, like this is not um Okay, so we have that. Let's split it like this and we can do it. So we're gonna do X, Y, and Z. Ah, God damn it. God damn it. And, and we're just gonna return the position and actually I don't even need the the variable. So it can be like this. But still this is not the issue. I'm I'm quite sure this is the issue. Because if we have like three hundred iterations in those two uh, four loops we're gonna expand uh, this list quite a bit so I might just have to create an array actually I know how to do it now that I think about it I know how, how I can create an array how can how can how, uh, how I can cr uh, calculate the size of the array that I need for this calculation. Man, but this is... Oh, this is gonna explode. Okay. I might have to restart Unity because of that, of this issue. So let's get this uh, step out of here. New vector three array. And now he wants me to specify the size for it. So I think I can just do... So I can get the total length. I can divide it by step. Uh, and can I do... Yeah, seal to... So I think I can do this. Uh, actually, I don't have to put it in there. I have to put it in here. Yeah, like this. Of our index. Or let's call it cache. Oh, shit. Uh, what have I done? What have I done? So this is zero. Instead of cache add, we're gonna do cache array of this equals position. And after each, uh, so actually I can do this. So just increment there. And just return the cache array. We don't need to do this, and actually, yeah, actually, there's something that I'll look for. So let's uh, do a login here. So length. Let's look at the length of the cache array and put it to the last index. Because I wonder if we have to this cache array after it's done because maybe doing seal here might not get us the the right um oh in this in this was how the bounds of the array so yeah yeah <laughs> okay so i was thinking that the the, the value might be, might be too high but actually it's actually too low huh 
It actually does make sense. It actually does make sense. And I can't use the total length, but I have to use the... Yeah. Segment length dot. Um, I want to do select. I want the length and divide it by step. And I want actually, yeah, let's do it in here. And I want to sum this all up. And instead of that, let's do it like this. So this might be with still bounds. What? Okay. I was not expecting this. So why is it that it's out? Of, why is it out of the uh, out of the bounds? So I mean, it should be um, inside of bounds. Let's um, let's do some more painting. Oh, that's ugly. So we have this, and we have we have two, we have three, we have four. So what is this? So so let's say it's a length of um, Yeah, so this is 3.5, let's say, and this is a length of 1. It's gonna give me 3.5 pieces, but I'm gonna seal it up, so round it up. So it's, this is gonna give me 4. And I should have... But apparently I don't. So why does this... For each, oh. this is so weird, so fucking weird. Let's just put the breakpoint here. Let so breakpoint there. Let's switch to the bug mode. Extremely weird why we don't have uh, enough secondary. I for sure thought with that we're gonna have more space than we needed. But not that we're gonna have less. So let's see what it does. Okay, so let's go to the path. And we have something. So 316, and that's big. Because so the our step is 0 0.1, 0 0.1 uh, and uh, yeah, so it does make sense. 315 315 divided by 0. Point, well, that point 0.1. Yeah, but it's not actually 31.5, but uh, yeah, it has some some garbage at the end. Okay, now let's just put a um, let's add this and just let it run and see where it ends up. 317. Let's see what our so the i is still zero. What's our key? 315. Should I have to add one? So those are equal. So this is like the last, uh, the last step in here. Do I need just like one more? I mean, 
short. I can add a plus one there. I don't know why it needs that. And let's unmute breakpoints. Illustrate again. Okay, so we still don't have a cache. But are we still getting errors? Um, we're still getting errors. What? Okay. Now this is weird. Because now I've added. Uh, what is this plan? So so I've added plus one there. Yeah, so I have 317 And now it's 318 This doesn't make any sense Oh, I'm stupid, that's why it's so... Oh, Jesus Yeah, so it doesn't work because... <laughs> because I've created an infinite loop in here <laughs> Yeah. I'm stupid. That that's why it's out of memory. So because I've made this uh, this minimum, this condition is always. So yeah, I'll have to manually exit if those two values are equal. So if uh, yeah, if. Uh, those two values are equal. I'm just gonna break out of this for loop. Okay, let's try this. This does make sense. Because it wasn't a... It didn't look like a, like an expensive operation. So now it should be, should be way better. There we go. You still get 317. But I mean, it wants the 317, so it actually it reached the uh, 316, the index. Yeah. Hmm. Now, now I'm curious why it needs this. Uh... Oh yeah, it does make sense why it needs an extra. Yeah, no, no, think about it. It makes sense because we start at zero, but we end at length. It like it, if it was like this, yeah, the we, we we wouldn't need that plus one, but we actually ha we actually have this equal. So yeah, we need a plus one there. This does make sense. Let's. Um... Get rid of this and also this. So yeah, have the cache and actually have to go to each and every <clears throat> each and every module and ah and uh, let it calculate the the cache. And now yeah, this is like a a no brainer operation. Yeah, as you can see, the the the, the change is in, instantaneous. Though this does doesn't make much sense to be honest, because because there should be a lot of cash points in here. So this might not work as expected. This doesn't actually work as expected. 
Yeah, because I was expecting, as the angle uh, the angle got bigger, I was expecting a lot more cash points because like we're looping quite a lot around the tower. But this this fluctuates, but it doesn't just go above, and it should have like thousands and thousands of points. So calculation might not be actually what we need. And I wonder why. The length might not be correct. Yep. Yeah, the length is not correct. What the heck? The length breaks in here. Oh. Yeah, okay, so I, yeah, I think I know why. Let's just reset this so it doesn't go crazy. So this should be zero. Let's save this and let's go back to our straight piece, which is no longer straight. Let's put this back at. Yeah. So if we if we play the, this, so this increases, and and then it goes back down. Yeah. So that's a problem because it doesn't have a length of twenty. This should be forty, maybe, maybe way high. So I think our, this calculation, the arc length, this is not correct. Mm. The, the delta angle might be your problem. I don't think we should have a delta angle in here. I, sh I think we just have, we just need the, the difference between the angles and maybe just have it, um, yeah, we just need a difference. I don't know if we have to make it absolute, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we need the, the delta angle because this, this caps the value, if I'm not mistaken. It's going to be between, uh, ah, yeah, there we go. So it caps the value between minus 180 and 180. That's not what I want. So how does it work? Yeah, it just does this, basically. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to replace this with this minus this. And without this delta angle, I was doing an absolute before. So okay, so that's, that's actually taken care of. So now we should get a way, way, way higher length. Yeah. Now it, it's actually increasing in uh, in length. And now we have explosion of cash values that I ex uh, that I expected to see. When we get back, we have like a, a small number of uh, of cash points. But if we loop around the tower. Oh, 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 yeah, I have a lot of, uh, yeah, we get uh, crazy stuff. Oh, it gets out of range, that's interesting. I wonder why is that? And it might be a floating point error. It could be a floating point error. So it was like, um, what? It kind of breaks down at like 5,000 angle. I might have to cap this. Maybe 1,000? Or like, whatever, some of 360. I don't think you're gonna need more than this. And it's breaking my math, so. Let's try something. Let's see. 
like um, let's see six loops maybe 160 let's see what that looks like 160 oh damn that's that's a lot yeah I just cap it at this yeah let's actually do So here's the angle and I'm gonna say uh, we're gonna have a mean value of minus actually I can do 360 times 6 in here yeah and the same for uh, max value but without the minus yeah private const int max loops and put it at 6 just replace it in here yeah and we can do actually less than that let's put it at 4 actually it's compiling so it's gonna shrink yeah yeah, I think this is decent. I think you'll want more than this. I don't know why. I don't know why you would want more than this. So yeah, this is this should be enough. Yeah. Okay. And I might have to do the same. Actually, no. Oh, but because of this, actually, yeah, yeah that, that does make sense. I might get back to what we did earlier with the, this tower aligned component and just put a... Where's the angle? Yeah, here. So so we, we saw an interesting uh, attribute. It was wrap. So put 0 and 360. This value would wrap around 360, so never exceed 360. It will, it will uh, back to zero. Because in this, in this scenario, for the tower aligned component, you, we don't care uh, about values above, above 360. Yeah, there we go. This does make sense. Cool. Okay, let's save this. And I think we're actually done. Oh no, actually no. We have to still test this um, this cache. So we no longer have a list. Uh, we don't want system in here. And something's gonna break. Let's see what it. Uh, so this is mat f. Okay, let's close this line. Okay, so we have we have the cache and yeah, what what, what I wanted to see is uh yeah. So I want to see the difference between the real position and the cache position and let's see what uh, what the magnitude is. And we're gonna do we're gonna simplify the the this thing a bit so let's go to the tower builder and make a tower that only has one module so it's easy to see and also let's go to the enemy to the enemy spawner and only spawn one um let's spawn only one uh one enemy and that's it Let's comment this out so that we can see a clean. Uh... Oh, yeah, uh, we have to go through each module and update the cache for each one. Actually, we have to do some, um, yeah, 
Ah, what should I look at? Uh, children lock. We do we do have to dirty this because we changed the value of a serialized field. We should dirty the the field. Where is it? Here. Where's my cache? Here. So he doesn't know what this is, but that's not a problem. I mean, I'm, I can't even... Actually... Uh, it's an if. Let's put it in a unity editor if. Like this. So now the thing is, whenever the cache is, uh, uh, gets recalculated, the... I actually don't like this. Hmm. Oh, so this, uh, wait a second. But those are, so these are serialized. Why am I, I shouldn't be doing this. Cause I don't want to recalculate the cache. Or the length at runtime. Yeah, that was stupid. Yeah, but one thing that I don't like right now, so whenever I'm gonna over over this I'm gonna dirty the prefab which is not not cool so I might have to Oh, what is it because of this? One change, I want a dirty, but on in it, want a dirty. Uh, not var. Uh, bull dirty. Just place it in here. Actually, I might just take out this. Because it doesn't have anything to do with the length. So, the length. I will pass dirty in here because this does make sense. So we can dirty again in here because we changed those values. And now here, so this should be on init, and those two should be on change. So now whenever the, the editor is initialized, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, uh, they shouldn't be, they shouldn't dirty the prefab. They don't. And they don't. And actually, no, this is good. No, uh, yeah, this is actually good.
I might make this uh, a bit more easier. So, set up waypoints. So let me see. Actually, I make. I might just make this. Uh, no, let's make. Let's change the on init function. So I'm not gonna call setup waypoint. I'm actually gonna do something in here, and that is, I'm gonna make this. Yeah, and now, and now whenever I set up the waypoints, actually I don't need the dirt anymore because it's all always gonna be true. Now I'm gonna send the dirty. This will always be the case. I'm always gonna dirty uh, the prefab or the scene or whatever. I calculate cache. There we go. So it should have the same effect as in I click on the path and uh, the, the prefab is not dirty, but let's create a new path for example. Path 3. This is already dirty. So, but uh, uh, spline. I add this already dirty. The cache is created. Oh, this is not good. Oh, it's because it starts at 10. Yeah, should be at zero. Yeah. Yeah, this looks decent. Now that I save it, I go here, nothing happens, I change this a bit, now it's dirty. Yeah. Cool. So let's, um, now that, actually no, we, we still don't know if the, if the cache works. Okay, so those are okay. Parallel. Let's create. Yeah, but now, now, well, now we don't have patience for this. So now we have to make uh, a change. <laughs> to actually, update the cache. Okay. Wait. Okay. Helix. God damn it, I'm gonna make a button for this or a context menu thingy.
Oh no. Um. Yeah, much better. Linux is done. Combine. Recalculate cache. Recalculate cache. Uh, path. One eighty. One eighty reverse. And last one. Cool. So all the modules are done. Now let's try it again. What is this? His assignment is never used. Spot. Yeah, that's. Um, yeah, that's okay. God damn it. Wait, what? Oh, okay, that makes sense. Let's do this at start. Or not even at start, um, actually. Yeah, so lifecycle service dot add listener and I'm gonna listen for playing. Yeah. They should do it. It's a bit hard to track it, but I don't see a difference of more than uh actually let's do it like this. Let's just look at the data. Let's pause it because we have enough data now. So there are some discrepancies, but they're not that huge. So the biggest one I've seen is 0 0.15 0 0.11 okay we can do another uh, we can do something else let's uh, make this a bit better so I don't care about the percentage because anyway it's gonna differ between all the modules but Let's see if it's uh, let's just say like this. Is it bigger than so this so so point two would be like twenty centimeters. Yeah, let's try it like this. let's see what it does. This looks nice. Um, let's try to use the cached position instead of the real position and see what uh, what it's gonna look. I'm, I'm wondering if it, uh, I'm wondering if it's gonna be choppy. I 
I saw something. That was definitely an error. What was that? What was this? Just some precision sign attempt for dummy clone is not valid. In position. Oh, okay. This is something. So, uh, huh? Interesting. So we evaluate and get uh, none. That might be because we gave it. Okay, I think I know why. I don't think it should happen though. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, why? Why would it give a none here? Let's look at the cache. Could be two things. We don't get the, the correct value from the cache, but we would get an out of bounds error if that's the case. Or also, or uh, or else uh, the cache is wrong somehow. Ah, cut them! It, I'm an idiot. Should have pressed. Um, pressed on play instead of pause. Okay, we have the same module, which is nice. Let's see. Let's look at the cache. Let's just look through the values and see if we spot any nuns. There might be a nun right at the end. Let me make this bigger actually. Yeah. So I see nothing. But the last value might be a nun. No, it's not nun, but it's zero. Which is okay. No, it's not okay. Why is it zero? Zero means like it's in the, the the root of the module, which is not correct. Okay, this is wrong. This this one value is wrong. Oh, so this file. Okay, okay, this file might be wrong. Because because yeah what the, okay i have to test this uh let's see where do we calculate the cache so here so there was something that i was looking for here and i think it's happening so let's let's look at the length of the of the cache array Uh, and uh, yeah, and let's look at the the last index. Those two should be equal. Theoretically, should be equal all the time, but they might not be. So let's look for this. Let's get rid of this uh, breakpoint here. Let's try it again. Let's hope we get the same module. I mean, I could find that uh, that uh, split module, but maybe we get lucky. We didn't get lucky, and we also don't get any. Oh, actually, of course we don't get any any console logs because we don't do the caching. I have to go to the. So let's go to the split module. And let's uh, recalculate this. Yeah, so we have one less than the length. So that's a problem. But now I wonder why that is like this. Hmm. Let's look at the other path too. Same problem here too. 
let's look at the last page. Yeah, so the the last value is not set. Okay. So all I'm thinking about is this if we're exiting too soon. And I think I, I know how to change this. I might just know how to change this. So instead of doing this, I might just make this. So let's get over the length. Let's just add step every time. We are going to clamp that there. And let's compare k to the length. So k, if k is uh, larger or equal than length, we're going to break. This might help. Instead of doing that um, absolute thingy, so let's try it like this. So this was a so that that two six six thingy. Yeah, now we get the same length in the index. So now the first value is like like this, and the last value should be also a round number. Yeah, yeah, this is this is this is good. Yeah. Oh, and here's here's our none that we got previously. Hello. Let's uh, recalculate the cache. We still have a none in here. Why is that? Oh, huh, that's interesting. Why do we have none in here? So the so that th this bug from that I fixed right now was another bug. It's not the same as the none bug. So now the question is, why do we get a none here? Why would we get a none in there? I mean, we could do a division by zero, but I don't know. I, we're not doing any divisions in here. Okay, so so it's good that it's this value. Let's look at the end. Let's do let's see the the last value. How does it look like? Yeah, so it looks like the the last value in the list. So now we just have to look at this value, because this should be the first. Value. I don't know what what's wrong with this uh, with this none at the, at the beginning. Where does that come from? It shouldn't be there. Yeah, okay, so let's put a, um, yeah, let's put a breakpoint here and let's trigger the, the cache again. So this is zero, this is zero. Oh, the percentage is none. What? Zero. The length is zero. Whoa, wait, what? Wait, we have two lengths? Oh, oh, I'm stupid. Yeah, that that that's exactly what I see there. What the heck? Yeah, this does make sense. Shit. Okay, so um, yeah, yeah. So the problem is we have two two waypoints in here that are in the same position. So now we should get that that none in here. Um, I mean, it, it already recalculated itself, but yeah, let's put the breakpoint again and see this. So in length we shouldn't get yeah. We have one length and that's it. Yeah, this the yeah. Okay. I guess I might have to put some errors if you if you put the same um, waypoint twice. But that might be a bit tricky to do. Yeah, we'll see. If we get any more errors like this, I I might know what to look. For. 
but yeah, for now that that looks good. But now I have to check all the, the modules to see if I have some uh, if I have duplicate uh, waypoints. But that might uh, that might happen anywhere. So I look at split. Let's look at parallel. There are two. There are two. Uh, let's look at helix. There are two, there are two waypoints, combine. This one looks good. So it has four, uh, four waypoints, but uh, they're all different. Or are they? Wait. So it starts at minus 90, at zero, and it goes to minus 20. Oh, huh, we are. They are different. This is good too. So this is combined. Let's look at 180. This is good. 180 reverse. This is also good. Okay, so let's try it again. Let's clear this. And let's get rid uh Yeah, we don't have any breakpoints. So let's look at this. Nice. It looks quite smooth. Quite smooth. I mean that's 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 actually amazing. Because that means that I don't have to do anything else. Let's try it like yeah, so I so I know I saw values of uh, 0.15. I just want to see how many there are. So actually, let's do this. Actually, I don't even. So let's put the if here. Let's put that there. Let's just write it like this. And see how many we and how frequent they are. Okay, we got one. Okay, they're not that frequent. It's weird that we don't all get them. But I guess that depends on the on what the percentage value is. Because the cash for a ah, for certain intervals of of uh, of uh, percent is gonna give the same answer, but the real position is gonna calculate the real position for that, uh, for that uh, for that percentage. So yeah, that, that does make sense actually. So it's not not it's not always gonna hit the same the same point as it does now. Yeah, so this works quite nicely actually. This is actually nice. I may just keep the um the salty plate function uh for a for a while. Even though I don't need it, but I might I might have use for it in the future. So I just I'm just gonna keep it so I don't have to do those calculations again later on. So let's clean up this a bit. So we're gonna, yeah, we're actually, we only need to do this. And that's it. Uh, 
and I'm gonna comment this out. I'm not gonna use the cache on the gizmos, uh, only because I think it might be a bit too... or for, for some type of splice it might be a bit too much to use it. Like drawing um, like thousands of uh, of lines. Um, I think this is uh, this is a bit better because it 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 basically draws the same number of uh, lines um, uh, um, yeah it, it, it about how uh, what what the length of the spline is it's just gonna draw the same number of so it's it's a bit better i mean in, in situations i i think we're gonna keep it like but for runtime, the cache, it's sure going to be nice. Okay. Cool. Let's see what we have here. Oh, no. I forgot to start a timer for this. God damn it. Thankfully, I can look at the... At when I committed the last thing, so I know when, when I started. So, the last update I did was at... 12.26. So one hour and a half, <laughs> and I estimated ten minutes. <laughs> one hour and thirty minutes. Yeah, this was a very bad estimation. Very bad. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna. Finish all the tasks that I that I have in the sprint. Uh, I mean today. What am I listening to? I mean, I don't know the. Ah, it's the the new uh, the uh, the new album. Okay. Okay, so oh shit, I forgot to to change back the builder to ten and dummy um, spawner. Shit. Let's remove this. Let's undo this. And actually, yeah, that's right. I tested the. I haven't tested the. The new the the cache uh, the cache uh, with the composite spline. Okay, I guess I guess we're gonna test it now. Let's hope for the best. Yeah. Thankfully, I know why this is happening. But yeah. Okay, so I guess the cache spline not done yet. So let's uh, start the timer and uh, work on it a bit more. So the problem is that when we do this evaluation, we should also so we have the, the actually let's do it internal. So you get the value from the cache, but the problem is that it's in local space. So we should add the not the transfer. I need like the module. Um, hmm. What's the root position? Oh. Okay, so I'm at zero zero, so that uh, that should be it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I get the the, the root position, so I get uh, so I uh, transform this uh, this position into word space instead of it being in uh, local space. Now it should work fine. It should just get yep. Oh, 
that's quite a big spiral. Yeah, so now it works as, as expected. And now we should just get there and just loop back. Yep, there we go. Cool. Um, Okay. Now I wonder what we should work on. Hmm. Yeah, so there are a couple of things to do. I think I'm going to do this. Um, health component that, that we're gonna use uh, for the tower and the and the enemies uh, this is not gonna be anything it's just gonna hold the off basically so that we know the the health yeah that's gonna this is gonna be an easy task This is the root name we say I'm using, right? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, so components held is gonna be an entity component load phase. There's nothing gonna there's nothing gonna happen in the load phase, so just complete the load immediately. Health data. Okay, this is gonna be uh, an anti entity data component. Actually, how, how did I write it for, what was the tower data, yeah. Oh yeah, so I have it here. Okay. Let's make the IO file. This health data is going to be a partial and I'm going to implement all the members. So, 
This is actually gonna do nothing for now. Actually, yeah, let's uh, let's actually implement those. So, so we're gonna have health in here. Let's put it at zero by default. Uh, let's put it in a tab. Base group. General tab. And that's the same thing we're gonna have in the struct. We're gonna have this health. Actually, we need this. Health is equal to health. And that's the same thing I'm gonna do in the other function. Uh, health is health, but health from material as data. So like this. Okay. And I may just add an event to this because I'm definitely going to need the mm. Yeah. Um, to float variable so now I need um what was that called I if this and I have to implement all of those on validate ESF um, objects. This refresh and with this and game object. Okay, now let's attach it to the door. And see how it looks like. Let's get the inspector. So we have the top data, and now we're gonna have health data. So we have two tabs. And let's make also the health. There we go. I don't like that those two are. Um, Wait, actually, why does it look like that? Oh, because I haven't added uh, so the health component should know about the health data. Yeah, still looks like shit. So it should be a space in there. Doesn't look good like this. But I'm gonna fix it another time. Oh yeah, let's see if it's still working. So let's save this. So let's look at the tower. Yeah, health. Yeah. Oh, also, I think that I rem I, rem I don't need this anymore. So I don't need this GID. Because I fixed the ES framework. So now I should be able to save the game and it, I shouldn't get any errors for not having that. Okay, so I save the game. And if I start again, it should just work. Yep, cool. Okay, so this is it. So, so that's the component for health. It's just gonna... Actually, I might just... Uh, Add some methods to it for healing and uh, taking damage. Okay, so yeah. Take damage amount. Heal amount. 
d dot health minus equal amount actually not minus equal let's do and oh, jesus i oh, right so zero and okay and also we have to update the health ui so this value equals to this and let's do the same thing in here and yeah so we actually need a yep it's good that we've done this so we we need health and also max health And let's um, do this here too. So this is max health, uh, max health. Okay, so that should be serialized too. And this will be a minimum between the uh, mean in the dot max health and health plus count because this is the heal method and we're going to update the uh, the health ui variable oh i'm gonna get rid of that okay we can put buttons on those actually so we can test it let's see health there we go let's try it actually i haven't set the maximum health for the tower so let's do that real quick so the max health should be 100 Let's get um, let's get a actually let's get a property for this. Let's put it here. Oh wait, what what the heck is this? Not the tower data man. The health data. Here we go. So we have zero and one hundred. So if you go to the health component, you can heal. Let's say I want to heal with fifty health points. Invoke and bam. We, do, we did 50 and we have an error uh, because that variable is not set and now I wonder if I can do this no because it's an assignment so I have to check for this first Setting is always important even though it's manual but yeah yeah let's try it again and actually, let's uh, let's set the the max. Of... Actually, I can set it here. Okay, so it's 100. Then let's put the health to 50. Let's say save this. Let's play again. Okay. So now I can heal again. So let's heal by 50. Wait, 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 wait. Something's not right here. Okay, so I guess that did not work because I did it at run time. Hmm. Okay, so let's put this back at 100. Let's go to health. Let's put 50 in here. And let's heal. And that did it, and we don't have an error. Let's take damage. Let's say 25. And I took damage. Let's heal again. Let's heal by um, 15 points, let's say. Then I heal, I heal, I heal, I heal, and then I cap at 100, and let's also take damage, and I'm capped at 0. Nice. Cool. Let's put those. How oh, about the type of values? Hmm, that's weird. Oh, it does make sense. 
So I set the values, but because I load the game, the save file has those two values uh, set to zero. So it just loads the values from the save file. If I do, what is it? Clear player preps. Now I should have the the correct values in here. Yeah, yeah. So it was in the <clears throat> it was in the save file. Okay, so this component is done. Now for real, and we got past our estimation by three minutes. But that's okay. Sure. Hmm. Now I wonder what I should um, get from the list. I could do the game manager, but actually I might do this after I do some of the other managers that uh, that that will be linked to to this one. Actually, yeah, let's throw this in the backlog. It's actually not not uh, the time for it. I might do the controls manager. So this is basically gonna yeah. This is the entry point for all our input in the game. And everyone is going to use this component to, yeah, to to handle the input. Hmm. We also have the time manager, which is this is going to be a simple. Um, actually, this is the time manager, because this is this is going to be a simple one. It is just a scriptable object, or actually a service, but yeah. I have to do some cleanup in here, because it's not... Actually, let's put it in here. Yeah, this is so... Yeah, I'll have to organize all the, all the code. Uh, it's gonna be quite ugly in, in a few months but let's just keep it like this for now okay so I'm gonna do the time uh, time manager and I said I, I want it to be a, a service okay I have to implement something I have to implement the reset function which is totally fine doesn't have any dependencies all it is going to do is have a um, actually hmm yeah so let's do a private should it be an int should it be what should we do this what should this be hmm I guess it'd be an int. So basically, the the idea of this uh, time manager is gonna be um, so in the game you'll be able to to fast forward the game, so make it make the, uh, the game go faster, and that's exactly what this uh, time manager will do. It's gonna know if uh, if the uh, if the game speed is set to normal off or two uh, x or something. Okay. 
normal and fast private game speed game speed in the set we're gonna do this game speed equals to normal and I wonder if this should actually be a public and non toggle buttons, yeah. And now that I think about it, time doesn't it doesn't make sense. So I might just call it game speed manager. I think that's everything that I need. Let's see if it's registered in the services editor. It is not. Oh, yeah, it does make sense because I have to do the whole thingy. So, um, create asset menu. So, menu name is going to be. I'm gonna put it in uh, project tower slash this. Yes. And see where I'm gonna put it. I have settings, I have game. I have this in here. So the UI. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put it in. So pro. Oh, so I called it project tower, not PT. Okay, so let's rename this project tower. Let's add some spaces in here, even though we're not gonna create this again. But yeah, we're just gonna have it here. And let's see if it shows up in here. Yeah, so we have speed. We can change the speed of the game. I mean, or we will be able to change the speed of the game when we hook up to hook this up to something. And also, does it appear in here? Yes, it does. Game Speed Manager. Now, what I need to do is add it to this. Actually, I don't think I need to add it to this because I'm going to have references to it. Right? No, I do have to add it. No, I don't have to add it because the. Uh, it's not a single done. No, so I don't have to add it. Because whenever I'm going to reference it in the game, I'm, it's just going to be loaded into memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The following service doesn't implement any methods in Speed Manager. What do you mean, doesn't implement any methods? Oh, yeah. So I did a reset method. I haven't actually used it so um on scene loaded that's what i need reset yeah so now it should work refresh this you should play this press it yeah <laughs> It's good that I put errors for myself, so that I remember to implement this correctly. Okay, if I refresh, yeah, no errors. And now what I can do is go here, and so it's now on normal, I can put it on fast. Actually save it. And if, uh, actually that might... Okay, so I, I should make that not uh, serialized. Uh, yeah. So if I play now, this should switch to normal when the, the scene is loaded. Yep. So yeah, enum toggle buttons, but this is... Um, Non-serialized, okay. And also... 
enable text I'll set it thing okay some more music in here so hmm. now that's a good question what should, what should we listen to should we listen to thrice hmm. I guess we're gonna do some yeah uh, let's try some Gemini C Okay, let's get back to this. Okay, so we have. Okay, so I set it to, to non uh, to serialize, but I um, sh show in inspector. Okay, I might want to have this in another uh, bracket. That they're a bit separate, but yeah. Yeah, okay, now I can see it. It's uh, they are buttons, and uh, yeah, I have, I have a label, but I have this space here which I, I don't like. I don't really like. Okay, so that's actually what I want to use a label, not an empty label. So this space should disappear now, hopefully. Or not. Okay, I was expecting this space to disappear, but well, whatever. I mean, it still does the job. If I set it too fast, it's still gonna work, right? It's fast. Let's play, and it should be yeah. So it got reset it to normal. Cool. Okay, so that's it. This is the component, and we actually uh, beat the estimated uh, time that I set for this task by like 30 seconds. <laughs> okay, so what do we have here? We have a folder, we have this new file, and the asset. Yeah, that should. Yeah, that looks fine. Okay, so I have two things that I can do right now. But actually, no, I can't do any any user interface at the moment. I I will have. To, oh, actually, do I need? No, actually, no. I don't need the controls manager for for the UI. So, but actually, yeah. No. So, 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 so for health indicator and for where's the other one? Yeah, game speed switch. Yeah, I can do those two, and I'm gonna put a dependency because I I need this. Uh, I need to do, do the the research for the localization. So let's put the uh, dependency on the localization. Exactly, need to do that first. And see see how that works. I don't really want to do the weapon slot yet, because I actually need the actually yeah I can do that because I need the controls manager. So that's twenty six. I might just do it like this. And it's gonna come later. Okay, let's do this. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I wanna do something for um for modules and actually something that I I've kind of already done. I wanted to have um, a component that would, uh, whenever you select uh, select it and uh, or select the game object or uh, any of the children, it would uh, draw gizmo. 
Oh, interesting. If I select here a gizmo, it doesn't show up. So it shows up if the parent is selected, but not one of the children. Yeah. Okay. So so it's good that we or that I want to make this component because that's exactly what I want. So I I basically want a component that would tell me where the where the root of the yeah where the where the component is so that we can align uh, uh, the children elements uh, to the root uh, to the root element. Basically, we're gonna have like some errors in here or something. I don't know. A dot the sphere or, or something, something that mm, tells us the where the root is. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna throw that in the in here in the utils. Let's make a folder for it. Sure. Or actually, no. Let's not make. Let's uh, let's make that in here. So. Let's call it root indicator. Let's put this in the correct namespace. This is gonna be a mono behavior. And we're gonna draw some gizmos. Um, we don't need this. And this is, it is actually gonna be quite easy to do. So We're gonna have uh, we're gonna draw three lines. So the first one is gonna be X and X I'm gonna draw it with the red. Plus minus uh, vector I think I think it's left. Yeah, left. So from there to right. And actually this is actually up here. Actually I might just write for both and just put a minus in there. And let's draw the the other two lines as well so red green green and this is gonna be uh, up and up red green and blue uh, and this is gonna be forward and actually that's it that's what I have to do so I draw three lines that indicates the the position of the root and let's add it let's see what it looks like so root indicator there we go that's all i need actually let's try to okay so it doesn't keep the the rotation of the of the root so i might have to do that somehow actually i know how i think i know how to do it but uh, so we have this matrix but i'm not sure how to set this up There we go. I think this is what I want. So I need a position. Transform that rotation. Transform dot look scale. Okay, let's cache this. Let's call it. Let's call it like this, and let's see what it does. It should have the same rotation as the. It does have the same rotation, but because I've passed in position in here, I never have to to add the root 
positioning here. Because basically I changed instead of having origin at zero zero, now the origin for for those uh, for those draw lines are at uh, this position. And actually, I can get rid of this variable. So now we should get the the lines back in here, or, or not, or, or not the lines. Uh, what are my lines? <laughs> I didn't expect them to be here. Okay, uh, uh, this has to be a minus. Yeah. There we go. So now they should be aligned to the yeah they're aligned to the top, aligned to the top. so yep that's exactly what I need one actually one th one more thing but I don't know how to do it so I was looking at that uh, but um so. Gizmos without depth test. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, so use handles instead of Gizmos. That's okay with me. I knew there was a and a start, uh, and we have we do have a matrix. Okay, so I might just be able to to paste this um, paste handles in here, and it just gonna work. And actually, no, I don't think I have to specify it here. It's a uh, it's a third parameter in the draw line. No, it's oh it, it has thickness. Damn. But that's not what I want. So Oh, Z test, that's what I want. I think. Always. That's what I want. Quite sure of it. So this blue line should be on top of the tower now. Yeah. Cool. Yep, this is exactly what I wanted. Let's try this uh, this thick variable. Yeah, so let's say. Um, let's put it two. I don't know what what value of two means. But let's try it. I don't think it's gonna mean two pixels. Oh, it is two pixels. Damn, that's so much better. That is actually nice. Oh no, it's not two pixels. Oh well, no, 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 it is. It is two pixels. As I scroll in, it's the same, it has the same thickness. Doesn't matter what the, the, the zoom is. Cool, so we have this. And now we can actually get rid of this, uh, this white line because it's ugly. So let's get into the tower aligned component and just get rid of this Gizmos thingy. Oh, 
But now the the only problem that I have is yeah, I don't want this to be always drawn. I would like to be drawn when we have a, a child selected or the the, the um, component itself, but not the parent. So we'll have to do some uh, some things in here. Actually, one thing that I want to do is let's uh, hide the monoscript and let's see. Selection active game object. So if this is uh, actually if this is null or Um, so I want to get the selected game object and check if, uh, no, I want to do the other way around. So I want to get a transform. And Check if the selected is a, ch a child of. Uh... No, no, no. It was no. It was like that. So I look at selected and I. Let's get uh, yeah. Let's get that in there. Let's be like this. Let's make this a const. Actually, I might just get out of here. Okay, let's see how if this works. Okay. God damn it. <laughs> it does exactly the the opposite of what I wanted. So I guess it's the other way around, but actually why is that? Oh yeah. So if I am a child, ah, yeah, yeah, so if I'm a child, uh, I selected, uh, yeah. I think it's not gonna work when I'm gonna select, uh, myself. So it's gonna work. So it's working when I select this. It's not gonna display when I select a parent, but I don't think it's gonna work when I select myself. So I have to do an extra check for this. Or transfer and. Uh, I think it be like this. Yeah. So we select it. We select a uh, a child object. But if you select the parent, it's not gonna. Run. Yep, that's it. This is exactly what I wanted. Yeah, so you can see you that component from from anywhere. 
And now you know how to how to move your uh, your child to be aligned with the uh, with the root. Yeah, cool. Let's add this component to to, uh, to all of those. So we have a root indicator for each of them. Yeah, and this is not gonna work because uh, we're only dealing with a single uh, game object, so we don't have we don't work with multiple selection. I mean, I could work with multiple selection, but that's going to make it a bit more complicated and it's not going to be worth it. Why am I... Oh! If this is uh, collapsed, it's not going to show me the gizmos. That's kind of kind of stupid. Okay, that's a problem. <laughs> okay, that's not good. So when I select one root indicator, it's gonna show all of them. What? Why? So I know why it's showing that one, but why it's showing those other ones? So, so we have an active game object. The transform is not the child of the selected one. Okay, let's split this up in more ifs. So first of all, let's make this. Let's get this out of here. Let's make another if with this. Also return and let's put this here. So actually let's get this in here too. So if we don't have a selected game object, we're not gonna render. If we do have a selected one, okay, so we're only gonna render if so I can do it I can do it the other way around. So if the select transform is a child of the transform or the transform is the selected transform. So let's just invert this and this should be exactly what we wanted and then, then we can switch it. Okay, so now we render this, but we don't render the other ones. So yeah, let's select a child that still gets drawn. Select a parent; it's not gonna get drawn. Okay. Now let's do this. Uh, let's switch this. So if it's not the child and those two are different, so if the selected transform. Okay. Okay. Uh, that that should that should work. Yeah. Let's try it again. So if I select the parent, nothing happens. If I select if I click this, this is gonna happen. Let's change this to yeah. So we're gonna render that. If I select the child is gonna render and no other point is gonna be rendered. Only the ones did. Nice. Okay. So we have this. This is nice.
That should be. What? Oh, come on, don't be silly. Yep. Cool. Okay, so I think for today I'm only gonna do this one and then I'm gonna get out because okay so the create this is gonna require some some research as well to to look into player input from the input system because I haven't used that uh, before I, I I've looked at beta did but I haven't used it and I have to look into it a bit to see how we can uh, Use it in the game, and also, yeah, I'll have to do some research on the localization package. And that's gonna be quite boring because I'm just gonna read the documentation and stuff. So I guess I'm gonna do this, and then, uh, then I think I'm gonna end the stream. So yeah, so as I said previously. So the the reason why I did the the other task, the one with uh, where we cached the spline, was because of this. So for some um, yeah, for some elements in the game, we'll need to get uh, yeah, we'll get the 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 basically the closest point to the spline from a from a certain position. So that's what uh, what I will do right now. What the hell was that? What the hell? I hear some strange noises from from outside. Whatever. Okay, so getting back to this. So so I'll just make a method that just gets me the the closest point to the spline. It should be simple as uh, looping through all the points and uh, just getting the the magnitude, I guess. But actually, in a in a smart way. Okay, so let's start on this, and this is not gonna take thirty minutes. Okay, let me get the chat back. Okay, so um. Actually, now this is a good question. Where should we put it? Actually, no. I I definitely need it in the in the in the line, but I will I'll it will be used from the composite line. Yeah, I think I know how to do it. Oh, but this is gonna require to do require me to do some uh interesting stuff in here. Okay, let's deal with the spline for now, and uh, and we'll see. Public vector three, and we're gonna get another vector three. It's gonna be a position. Bar max uh, or minimum distance mean this is gonna be um, the max value of float, and we're gonna get the index. Not actually. Oh, so I just did a point actually. Okay, and this is gonna be like whatever, nothing. So this is gonna be a vector, uh, vector three, and we're gonna return this. 
now let's iterate through the cache let's make this a var come on let's make a show so it's a var and yeah Actually, I need to put the distance in a variable. So var dist equals um, cache of i minus that position. And we're going to do square magnitude. If this is less than min dist. mean this is gonna be equal to this and mean position is gonna be this position from the cache and that should do it this could be a four each actually I like it better like this. Yeah, this should do it. And I think I'm gonna make a, a test component that um, Yeah, let's make a test component so we can test this. Uh, let's make a class in here. Spline tester. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, so I'll need a reference to a spline line and on update what am i going to do on update um get closest point to the current position actually not in update um, gizmos um, draw a line from position to closest position and actually uh, actually let's lose uh, let's use um, handles uh, um, z test equals always handles and handle Other, let's put it uh, magenta so we see it okay let's test this actually let's do Let's do it like this. Okay. I mean, this should work fine. Um, let's put it first here so we can easily access it. Spline tester. So now we're gonna, just, we're gonna just run the game and uh, get a spline from from one of the modules. So spline tester, let's get a spline. 
and here we go. Actually, let's make this uh, path uh, uh, another color. Okay, where's my spline tester? So Okay, this does make sense because um, This position actually I'm gonna I'm gonna re rename it to world position We have to transform this because they are in different uh, coordinates. And when we get the minimum position, we're going to add the position so that it's in world space. Let's try it again. Okay. First module, 180. Yeah. That should do it. Let's color this somehow. Okay, like this. Let's add this to the spline tester, and it still doesn't look good. Oh, this actually looks good. Okay, so it goes to a point there, but what's up with that? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, let's look at the path and let's look at the cache. Let's look at the 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 both ends. Oh, we have. Oh. Okay, so yeah, that, that, that now that that makes sense. Can can I recalculate the the cash? Yeah. So now I don't get that value at the end. So it might just be a bad cash. But now I get something totally weird because why is it here why why do they hey what the hell oh it might it might be because uh, yeah the, this module is in the air so let's try to cal recalculate it when it's at zero and put it back at 20 uh, not the path but the uh, whole module Okay, now it looks good. Let's look at the path. It starts at a reasonable position. Let's go to the end. And it doesn't have that end position. So let's try the tester again. Let's lock it at the top. This is so distracting. Let's get rid of all the... Actually, let's get rid of the, the whole spawner. Okay, that's better. Okay, this seems to work. So I get the closest point to... Which, yeah, it looks fine. Because if I go up, yeah. So that's basically the closest point, but that's because of the curvature. So that's when I go up, it goes more towards this way. Because of the curvature, a curvature of the... Of the spline. Okay, so it works. It actually works, even though it kind of looks weird right now. But I mean, it looks weird if you look it from 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 on top. 
because yeah, if we let's make this, um, yeah, let's test it again. So let's put this, uh, uh, let's put it there. Let's put this angle. No, the angle is good. The height is not good. Or actually, no. Let's. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. So let's put this at zero. Let's put this at one eighty. Let's put this also at one eighty. But let's put this height of uh, at zero. Okay, and now let's recalculate the cache. Let's get our tester. Let's put our tester at zero. Yeah. And now it should look like it's particular. Yep. Yeah, so that's what I expect to see when the line is straight. It's a perpendicular to the to the spline. And then if you get at the end, if you go up, it's gonna yeah. We're gonna have a perpendicular on this straight uh straight piece of the of the path. Yeah, this looks this looks nice. This actually looks nice. Basically now okay so we have we have this on spline but that's not exactly what I wanted what I wanted. Because um I actually want it on the composite spline. Because this is what I'm gonna work with in the game, so enemies will uh, the enemies have uh, the enemies or the um will have references to the composite planes and are gonna call methods on the composite planes the planes itself and yeah we're gonna need a we're gonna need a similar function. Here, the problem is, how do we do this? Because we'll have to know um, which spline to interrogate. Which actually, yeah, no, I think I know how to do it. Change to last waypoint. I mean, I should change to last waypoint, but why? Do, why haven't I done it then? I'm gonna have to check back with this to do later. But yeah, getting back to this. So, so we have the world position, and we have to know which spline to interrogate for the closest position. So I think I'm gonna do that based on the height. Um. Yeah, yeah, so I'm gonna do it based on the height. One thing that I'm that I'm wondering, I don't think this splines array is gonna have my splines in the order because we did that um that thing this morning where we where we made that assessment. Operation. So I don't think this, th those are going to be in order. Let's let's look at this. Because if that's in order, it's going to complicate the algorithm a bit. But we can easily check. We have to look actually here. So this, those are the composite splines. Yeah. So I clicked on. And it's not what I expected. So actually, this is the. No, this is the first module. Wait a second. Um, wait, wait, wait. I'm confused. Oh, wait, what? Wait, why, why do I have two references to this? Hmm. 
I have 11, 11 splines in this, so I should have only 10. I found a bug. Okay, but anyway, we, yeah. And this is the third. Okay, so they are in order. Okay, this is gonna be way easier than I thought. Okay, so. Okay, so, okay, let's let's see how we do this. So. Let's look at the first spline. Let's look at the first waypoint. Which is actually not what I want, because I want the angle and height. I want the position. I don't want the waypoint. Um, I might actually look at the, uh, the the transform position. Oh, this is not good. Oh no, it is. No, it should be fine. No, no, it's not. <laughs> Okay, so yeah. Mm. Oh shit, we had a uh, we had Okay, this ah uh, I, I actually the the error might be when I might came from for from when I um recalculated the the cash. Okay, uh, I think I'll I'll have to to return both the the direction and the the, the distance here because I will need it uh, in the composite plan. So this is the position. Um, I have to do it the other way. So position, and we're gonna have a float distance. Position and nope, distances mean distance. Okay, this is gonna go crazy because he needs actually the position in here. And here, okay, so we're gonna look if the word position of this is below the first spline. So if um, actually yeah, so let's look at the, this word position word position dot y. If it's less than than the position of the first line, what we're gonna do is evaluate, evaluate this. So return size of zero dot evaluate not evaluate um, get closest point. Um, a word position and we will uh, 
return the same the same thing in here too. So this is one. Another age case would be if this is greater than the last line. And the last, uh, the last one would be it's somewhere between the actually. No, this is no, this is not correct. This is not. Uh, this is gonna kill me. my PC. Okay. So basically, let's see. Let's let's get painting here. Let's say we have three modules. Let's see how we hand if we can handle each case. It looks ugly. So we can either have a point here, and because it's below the last module, we're gonna use this to calculate the. I mean the. Sp Actually, I'm gonna use the spline for this uh, for the module, so we're gonna get the the distance from this. If we have a point above, we're gonna do the same with the last module. And if we have a point somewhere between, let's say here. We are actually gonna check three three modules. We're gonna have to check all three of them. I mean, we're gonna look at at, at this and 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 its neighbors. Yeah, we have to look at the neighbors because the issue the issue that could appear would be like, let's say we have a module. And another one below. On the one below, we have a path that just is like very, very, very uh, close to the top. And let, let's just say the path is gonna just go up. If we have a point right here, for example, if we only check this module, uh, at the height of the of the point. The closest point to the to the spline will be here, which is not correct because there's a the, the actual closest point is here. So because of we have to check, um, so we we first check the module where where uh, uh, the the module at the level we're at and uh, and its neighbors. So so we can um, yeah so we can. Uh, uh, fix this issue, and that's that's why I needed the the distance. Because right now, right now I'm not gonna use the so in those two cases I don't care about the distance, but in this uh, new case I'm gonna need it because I'm gonna compare the results from those three modules, and uh, actually get the 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 smallest one. So yeah, what I was thinking right here, actually, I need, and I don't have a reference to the global tower module. Global tower data, I mean. Because I want to look at this point, but, but like above it. So I don't, uh, I want to look from, from this point up, not, not from this point, because that's what I'm looking at right now. So I'm looking from this point because this is here's the root for the the top module, but I want to add to the component to the height of the module. So we're gonna have to add this in here, or just get it from somewhere. Cause I actually I can uh, can I get it from the spline, but that would be ugly. Mm, no, here. So the spline, the spline does have it. That's kind of ugly. 
no, I'm just gonna get it. I mean, let's copy this because uh, that's exactly what I want to paste in here. And and we have set splines. We're gonna have set this. We're gonna set this to. this and we're gonna add here the global tower data dot module height okay and if we are not in those two edge cases we're gonna do a for loop and we're gonna iterate through the splines I want this to be a var. Okay, so so let's get um, spline of i is the current module. Current module result gonna be um current module dot get closest point to the world position if uh, i is more than zero we're gonna look uh, at the the previous module splines of I minus one minus one and we're gonna do the same thing this module result and we need a um wait why why have I made a Wait a second, this, this is not right. I don't need a for loop here. Um, I'm stupid. So I don't have to look at all the modules. I have to, I can get the... Okay, yeah, that, that was bad. So the this I position... Is actually... So what do I have to get? Um, actually, I need those two values. Those are exactly the two values that I want. So min position y, and this is the max position. So var equals y. And this index is inverse slurp. Um, so I between in post y and max post y and the world position y. A clamp of floor twin. Actually, let's call this the just the current module. So this is the result. Let's do an if here. If result dot distance or like previous module result dot distance is less than this result is equal to previous module re result. And we're gonna do the same thing for the next. So if the index is less than splines length minus one, 
we're gonna like look at the next module so this is the next this is the next uh, module result also if the distance is less than that uh, we assign the result and then we're gonna return the result yeah like this let me move some empty lines and now this method should be complete only a couple things to do so wherever we set the set splines yeah in here we're gonna have to set this to global tower data and in the spline tester instead of a spline we're gonna get a composite spline and actually do the same thing yeah because it's the same method hey let's try it actually there were two errors in there mm. there might be a there might be an actual error it might be from the cache or oh, i recalculated the cache okay so we have this let's uh let's set the spline in here let's try this one You're telling me that's the closest position. Yeah, so this doesn't work. <laughs> I mean, not as well as I expected it. Let's, uh, where, where, no its spline let's put some break here okay so let's look at this oh, what happened wait what happened okay hello you need have you crashed Looks like you've crashed. Um, let's try to attach the debugger again. Although I don't think it's gonna work. It did work. But it's stuck. Okay, I don't know what's happening. I'm gonna just end, uh, end the task. Okay, so um, I'm gonna take a short break until Unity um, starts up again. Yeah, in a second.
Okay, I'm back. Um, yeah, let's uh, get this debugging started again. And I'm gonna do uh, something to make uh, the debugging easier. So I'm gonna remove uh, a lot of the modules from the system. Oh, come on, compile. And only gonna leave the straight piece. And also, uh, in the tower builder, I'm gonna have only uh, three three modules, so it's easier. To plug. Okay, so let's try this again. Because we know we know it's gonna handle. Um, you know it's gonna handle. Uh, we call them uh, um, a, a curved, uh, curved path because we've, we've tested it already. So individually, if you, if we uh, get the the answer for it, then uh, it's gonna be correct. But now we have to make sure that it works correct for the for the composite design. So let's try that. So. There's only going to be one its spline. Oh. Let's get it back to zero, zero for a second. Let's get it back here. So this works. So if we go below, it's going to test using the the last spline, if we go up here, it's going to test with this. If we go here in the middle, it's not going to test with the, the middle one, apparently. Or it might fail in an in a if statement. But if you go way, way, way above, uh, the other if is going gonna, is gonna to work correctly. Okay, so let's put a, let's put a breakpoint in here and see actually. Uh, where is it? Here. So let's put the breakpoint in here and see what happens. I have to touch the debugger first. Okay, so in this situation I'm expecting it's gonna enter in this if. So let's just keep... Yeah, so it enters in this if. Okay, let's put a stop on the breakpoints. And let's get this in the middle. And now let's try it again. Let's enable the breakpoint and boom. So so now let's see where the word position is. So it has something on X, but we only care about the Y, which is 31. This is gonna be zero. This is 40 plus the module height 20, which is 60. So it's not gonna enter in any of those first uh, two is like the corner cases and yeah here is gonna here we have the interesting part zero that's interesting. I wonder what this is actually. Oh, of course it's zero. Yeah, so this is a percentage. So I'll have to multiply this percentage by the splice length. Yeah. Splice length. Uh, spline minus one actually. This one. Yeah, yeah, because the, the 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 yeah yeah, so it's gonna be plus uh, minus one. Yeah, I think that's correct. Okay, so I have to recompile this.
This is actually easier than I thought. But I guess the there was some weird thing happening here. Hmm. Um, let's pause it again. Let's assign our spline. Let's put this at zero zero. Get it out here. Try again. There we go. There we have it. Wool. Let's do something weird with this. Actually, yeah, let's try to make um Okay, so we have path. Um No, what what should we do? Oh yeah, something like this. Yeah. Yeah, this might do it. Let's recalculate the cache and try the tester again. So if we go down, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. So we are in the territory of the of the first module, but we're still accessing the second module. And now if we go like somewhere around here, yeah. So even though we're on the territory of the of the second module, we're still uh finding a, a a close point to the in the in the first module so yeah that's we that's why we have to do those extra checks in here and this seems to work which is nice oh go down it's gonna snap to this you go on the other side yeah Cool. Nice, it works. It actually works. Cool. Okay, so I think that's it. Let's run this line tester because we no longer need it. Yeah. I have to check out what's with this to do. I mean I know what to change but I don't know why I have why I haven't changed it. Anyway, yeah this is this is actually nice. So now we can have elements that trap the spline. timer for this task and yeah over the allocated time <laughs> I mean for tasks this small it's kind of hard to to estimate um, how long it's gonna take but yeah if you're doing a task that's gonna take like less than let's say this it's gonna take less than less than an hour it's kind of, it's kind of hard to oh yeah it's kind of hard to um to evaluate to, to estimate the time it's gonna take so it's kind of okay though it's not way above the the time i set it's like 17 minutes above okay actually i want to revert this Modules manager because I want all my modules back. Cool. Composite spline. Let's see what what has changed and let's see if we. Okay, so we've we've added this. We have we have a way of assigning it, and you have this piece of code. Let's look in the spline here. So we've added this function, there's nothing to simplify in here. 
so yeah this is it no imports cool and let's see the tower build oh we call this uh oh yeah here this is thing that i want to revert and yeah we've called this that's it uh save file yes actually let's test that it still works let's make uh let's play this yep we have 10 modules nice oh yeah that was a problem i have to check the the, the composites planks to see why there are multiple paths of the same why there's uh, the same path multiple times yeah i have to make a I have to write a bug for this. Okay, and this is the bug. Okay, so I've added the bug for that. Uh, let's also check the the to do in here and see. Okay, so this is the only. Oh no! Wait, what? Ah ah. Okay. So I did cache the spline. Ah no, this is the this is for the uh, for the components. Yeah, the, I'm not gonna do that right now. It's not uh, not the position of the spline, but the but the actual spline component. Yeah, I don't know. That's not. Uh, I don't need to do that right now. That's why I haven't seen this because it had a typo in the to do name so it didn't show up this list god damn it okay so let's add a task for this too check to do in composite spline and it's for programming and for path and actually let's throw it in the back and throw this also in the backlog okay works as intended let's um let's commit this Ah, oh, come on! I know you can do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we've done some, some things today. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna end the stream here. Well, let's uh, let's recap what we've done today. So, first of all, we've we've worked a bit on the on the modules. So, where did they in the straight piece? Yeah, so we've added two things to the modules that are going to be needed for level design. So, first of all, we have the uh, tower aligned component, which basically lets us. Oh. Oh, we still have those. God damn it. Even though I blocked the transform, or yeah, the transform is not uh, interactable, I can't remove this. Unless I change the tool. Shit. Yes, yeah, so, 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 so whenever this component is present, I, I, uh, I make this uh, not editable. The transform 
but you have to make the the whole game object not readable so you don't have this tool selected so i might just make it so whenever this component uh, shows up um, i reset the tool to the to the hand you can't uh, accidentally move it with the with the move tool or the whatever rotate it or something but anyway so yeah yeah i'll have to make a task yeah so so we've added, we've added this this component that you throw on a game object and it helps you uh keep an object attached to the tower so instead of having to manually change the position and rotation you have this uh, uh, this angle and it just puts the the object uh, wherever you want it uh, on the tower and also the height so you can specify where on the module you want it and also you have this uh, this little um, uh, indicator that shows you where is the uh, the the yeah the 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 root of the object where is the position so whenever you are instead of the object uh, modifying the the components inside you know uh, you know where the root is so you can align the components to it so you don't get it like you just you don't get any objects that's gonna end up inside of the tower or just Put them way out there and have a gap and uh, that's gonna be seen in the game so you would have it like this yeah okay so those we did those two things we have this time manager component or the game speed as we now call it the game speed, which is going to be used for setting uh, the speed of the game, which is either normal or fast for those times when you want to, uh, yeah, fast forward the, the time a bit, make the make the game run a bit faster so you don't have to wait for, I don't know, the next wave or some enemies. We've cached the splines. So previously, the splines would, would have been... Uh, um, calculated at, at runtime or whenever you wanted to evaluate the spline and uh, get a position based on a percentage you, you would calculate the this curvature of the spline on the fly and uh, right now instead of this we have uh, we have the, the spline cached so we, we basically whenever you yeah, we do have errors here. Interesting. So whenever you edit the spline, um, the the cache is gonna be recalculated. So uh, so you don't have to, to to do the calculations every time. Okay. What else? What else have we done? Yeah, we've added this uh, this method, but that I can actually show right now. Um, so we can, on top of uh, of evaluating the spline, basically getting a position on the spline based on a percentage, you can uh, you can also uh, uh, call a method with a world position and get the closest position to, to the spline. For uh, yeah, it's gonna be used for the weapon to to align with the with the splines and uh, um, and uh, probably the enemies or I don't know but yeah for weapons for sure it's gonna be used and uh, yeah that's kind of it we've done some changes to some modules some some existing modules but uh, yeah we've added health to the tower which actually does nothing right now it's, it's just a data component so you have the health and the max health of the tower, and this is gonna be used later on when we add uh, uh, when we add the actual enemies that's gonna damage the the tower. And we've made the the tower that we've made uh, um, two streams ago. 
uh, we made it uh, made some processing in uh, asynchronous so that it doesn't uh, 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 produce spikes in the in the frame rate. I mean, it, it doesn't right now, but it might produce uh, sp it might have produced spikes uh, when we had uh, more modules like uh, with uh, a lot of more uh, objects uh, in in them and a lot of more dependencies so yeah that's kind of that's kind of what we've done today and i think i'm gonna end it uh, right here for the stream because um, the next uh, the next task that i have to do are well, they require some some research and uh, it's gonna, gonna be fun to um yeah so uh, it's not going to be fun to, uh, to watch me read the presentation for for some modules and or some uh, some things so yeah i think I'll end it right now and we're going to we're going to continue next week um also on uh, on saturday yeah about i don't know time Depends on the time zone. Or yeah, about 10, 11 p.m. Uh, um, Romanian time, which is like GMT plus two, I guess. So yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, see you next.